and it says we're live. Welcome, everybody. Yep. Uh, if it says we're live and it's Tuesday night, it must be 2A Tuesday. So welcome. Uh, Sand Hills here. You might know me as John. A lot of people are realizing that I have a real name, so that's all right, I guess. Um, we will give a real quick shout out here. I want to get notice up on Facebook and gun channels that were that were live. I've got it set up on gun channels. I just haven't posted over in the main chat board that we're going, but hopefully everybody over there already knows that. So uh, who do we have with us tonight over on the gun channel side? We've got David in the house, and it looks like I see him other places as well. And on the YouTube side, we have got DTemp62 and my beautiful bride, Sandhills Sweetheart. And tacos and french fries is in the house. I'm still hungry every time I read that name. <laughs> even though I literally, I didn't even chew my food. I just swallowed it whole and then got in here to get the chat started. Um, I'm only about an hour and a half behind getting home tonight. Um, those of you that don't know, I work for a regional cell phone company. And uh, I was late setting up phones. And anytime that happens, you can bet your butt it's because of a an iPhone taking forever to upload uh, the backup or download the backup or restore the backup, whatever it is. Apple just takes forever to switch people over. And when they roll in at 5 o'clock at night and then we can't get rolling until after 6 because of other reasons with their phones, yeah, it takes a while. So, okay, rant over about the phones. <laughs> no Android by Samsung. It's awesome. <laughs> Uh, who else do we have here? So, so anyway, I didn't have tacos or French fries tonight. I had uh, roast beef and mashed potatoes uh, because my wife is an amazing cook. You can't tell by looking at me, but I'm not losing any weight here. We need a tabletop uh, review tacos and French fries at some point. We, we, we should do a do live. That. We should do a live podcast. Like we'll go to Taco Bell and McDonald's and get tacos and French. Can't you fries. get French fries from Taco Bell right now? Uh, I don't know if they have nacho fries anymore. What we should okay. do is put the nacho know. fries in the taco and make we, nacho fried tacos. We should just make a French fry taco. There you go. There you go. What else we right. have? We've got Jason Stewart. Ghost is in the house. What's up, Ghost? Uh, you've got a link out there if you want to join us. We're going to talk about a uh, little bit about every second matters. Then we're going to talk about holsters and carry and stuff. If you want to be in here, Ghost. Um, Mike is in the house. What's up, Mike? And Joe Ziola is here. Frankie's Guns and Glitter is there and over on the chat panel as well. Gun Loving Grandpa Stan Buck is here. Uh, who else is here? Kingpin is there and here. Seven Wonders is in the house. The Mech is here. And it looks like everybody over there for now. So we will uh, continue to welcome everybody. And I've got moderators to help me make people feel welcome as I lose track of the chat because I cannot focus on more than one thing at a time. Over here in our panel, we've got uh, some of our usual suspects and a few that aren't always here with us, so we'll say hi to everybody. Uh, first up, we've got uh, Frankie's Guns and Glitter in the house. What's up, Frankie? Hi, how's everyone tonight? You're doing great, thanks. You're good. Awesome. And then we'll say hello to the kingpin himself, David Bowling. Happy second matter. Happy every second matters, everybody. Yeah, there you go. You got a little closer to Mike, it looks like. Couldn't hear you to start with, but I think we're better. I'm going to turn you up just a hair there. All right. And uh, moving further west, we've got Patriot in the Dark. What's up, Patriot? Thank you for the invite. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us and hanging out. And then over in a different corner of the same state as me, we've got <laughs> 11. Hey, man, thank you for the invite. Uh, quick plug as usual. Uh, Caliber Corner is moving to Thursday Thursday evenings from 5 to 7 Central Time, 6 to 8 East Coast Time. So it's going to be the same great show. Hopefully have a lot of the panel members there. Maybe some new panel members, who knows? And uh, we'll keep we'll keep on rolling, keep doing what we're doing. So that's yeah. Caliber Corner on GunChannels.com. GunChannels.com, Thursday right nights, 5 yes, o'clock Central. To yes, sir. Seven, you said. Awesome. And I won't be able to be there for the kickoff show because I'll be at work and work until seven this week. Although, as we just established, sometimes <laughs> I'm working until after eight. Um, so that's okay though. Cause I get paid by the hour. So oh, um, there you go, yeah, man. There you no go. Problems. Hey, Steven Brown. Hello from Oklahoma. Hello back to Oklahoma from Nebraska. Mm -hmm. so there we go. I don't know why all of a sudden I just started sounding a little more Southern than I really am, but that sometimes happens, I guess. Um, Okay, and hey, late minute edition of the panel. We've got obnoxious one. How are you doing? Here we go. Maybe we we can see your avatar. 
You're not muted. We cannot hear you. Blink twice if you can hear us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he can. He's not blinking. I'm not going to win this staring contest either. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll come back to you, Obnoxious. You might have to drop out and jump back in. We'll see. But if you can no, hear us. Oh, can you? I'm here. I forgot. Oh, uh, there you are. You had to unplug and replug your mic, didn't you? No, I had to uh, unplug the satellite and plug in the DSL. Aha. Uh -huh. Sometimes that happens. I've also heard that sometimes you have to uh, go unplug the Roku upstairs so that nobody else is taking up bandwidth. Mm -hmm. um, no, I can't have anybody on any bandwidth whatsoever because I'm on DSL. <laughs> I gotcha. Wow. I gotcha. Well, either way, we're happy to have you, and you're coming through loud and clear, so that's good. So Good for uh, her. Well, uh, hopefully all of us, I guess. We'll see. I don't know. All right. It's all good. Welcome. I'm kind of excited. I'm, I'm just happy that we didn't get started as late as I was afraid we were going to get started and that we've still got people joining us. So, oh, and we lost him. And he's back. Yeah. <laughs> I still have your little emoji guy. It looks like George Carlin every time I see that. <laughs> hey, we have a celebrity in the chat over there on the YouTube side. We've got uh, Ocasio. Ocasio Keyboard is oh, here. Really? So... I don't know if that's the same as, as that uh, congressperson, but the two bodies here, too. Cool, cool. All right. I won't get to shout everybody out as I see you because we'll actually get into the chat here pretty quick. Um, all right. Real quick here. It is obviously April 2nd. Hopefully nobody got pranked too hard yesterday on April Fool's Day. Uh, Jim Burgess had some cool stuff up on Facebook. If you're not friends with him, you missed some really cool stuff. But, uh, yeah, Travis got the idea right there. Got the patch rocking. Yep. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's some cool stuff. You can check it out on my Facebook page, too. And uh, we're going to go through some stuff here later on, but uh, I didn't get a whole lot of response on this. So I want to give everybody a chance to go over and find my post on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash sandhillshooter. And... Uh, Earlier today, there was a post. It's just white lettered on a black background saying it's every second matters day. Share those open carry picks and every second matters patches, and we'll display them tonight on 2A Tuesday. So I've only got a couple pictures in here, uh, three of them looks like. So I want all of you, if you can, if you've got some time, slip over while you're listening and uh, post a picture if you've got it of you open carrying, or maybe you can just open carry in your home, but you're taking that advantage tonight. Um, if you've got an Every Second Matters patch or shirt, hat, whatever you got, show that stuff off. And uh, we will uh, hopefully get a few more pictures come in here. And then we'll share those here after a while, um, after, we've got some, after we've got some more people go in there and do that. So facebook.com slash Sandhill Shooter, and I'll throw that up in the, uh, in the YouTube chat and the Gun Channels chat here real quick. All right, so real quick while I'm typing, um, I'll just let, hey, that's very cool, obnoxious. I'll just let everybody kind of talk amongst yourselves a little bit. Were you able to open carry today? And if so, how'd that go? I was in school, so unfortunately I was not able to. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you at some even point, able to field carry. some point, maybe the Department of Ed will recognize the human beings right to defend themselves but until that happens nah i'm afraid not i was able to open carry and i did awesome lucky man lucky man and i uh i posted posted my picture of my my uh hat with my every second matters patch and my chosen gun of the day for open carry over on instagram over on the Insta, as as the kids say, <laughs> with uh, with my chicken. I saw that chicken. That was a cool picture. I woke up still living in the state that I live in, so I did not open carry. Yeah, we know you're exempt from having to show us the pictures of open carry, but you can do it if you want to. You can still. Uh, you don't have. You're not on Facebook, though, are you, David? No. Uh. -uh. So never mind. You're exempt all the way around. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, um, I did go into the uh, one pawn shop 
because usually when I do my every second matters, I usually go look at guns. So I walked into the one pawn shop and she saw my every second matter shirt and just like, I like that shirt. Of course, she was wearing one that said, I plead the second. So, oh, that's also cool. <laughs> oh, man, I've never heard of that before. I want one of those now, too. And then now I'm I'm open carrying here at home with uh, my nightmare carry. A nightmare. Nice. Is that are those Second Amendment? Those, those grips are back? Second Amendment grips, baby. Hold on. Let me let me uh, present you to everybody so we can see what's going on when I'm talking here. So does that actually have the text of the Second Amendment too? then written down it? Yes, sir, it does. Oh, that's cool. It's not coming through super clear on my screen, but that's very cool. And you're the one that always posts the the, the waterfall background pics on Instagram, right? I, I might be. <laughs> yeah, you need to tell us how you take such freaking amazing photos because the lighting on those, the I mean, it seriously looks like something from like a catalog. It's crazy how, how awesome your pics are that you put up. Ooh, that, that's that, it that's all that, it is that's that's because i mean like the yeah man the picture freaking the, the guns look amazing then, too but and then i use uh let's see what do i yeah no. secret waterfall man that's what sets it apart right there so. it is it's, <laughs> it's, it's the uh it's the koi pond that the previous owners put in there now it's just a oh, pond. that's awesome oh okay cool. okay that's cool it's just a all pond right. now but um let me uh snapseed is the app that i use for most of those right on it's, and it's got a bunch of different uh like presets to it and stuff so you can okay now uh, i was not able that. to open carry today because i also had to go to work and i we don't have any gun free zone signs or anything posted it's never been discussed guns are not in our company handbook and i don't ever want them to be so i wasn't able to open carry however um I did uh, put a post up on Facebook. If you are uh, following on the, the Sand Hill Shooter Facebook page, then uh, uh, you saw that I, I was rocking the patch today and I was rocking the, the IPAC shirt under my work shirt. You just couldn't read it, of course, because um, I've got a long sleeve zip neck pullover that I, that I have to wear to work. Um, and I wasn't, and I didn't want to worry about printing or anything, so I couldn't put this on until after I got home. But I do have the Ozzy Osbourne handmade holster that he sent me if you guys haven't seen that yet you need to go check out the videos i posted two of them up now on uh on the channel and on facebook um one of them was i didn't even know what was in this box you actually saw me cut the tape on it for the first time in that video i didn't know what was coming out of there um and that's why i didn't go live because i had no idea what was coming i just thought there was going to be some some stickers or something come in there and then i open it up and it's a holster and, and then i'm just speechless um that somebody actually handmade me a holster. So it was very cool. And if you haven't gone and checked those videos out, you need to do so. But uh, Mike Ozzy Osborne, who uh, you see him all the time in our chats. He might be here later. I don't know. But uh, he made that. He said it's about the, I think, the eighth holster that he's ever made. It's the first time he's ever made one off of a, a dummy gun. I'm guessing he, he bought like a blue gun because he doesn't have a Glock 19. So uh, that was very cool. And it's got the... Uh, it's got the lime green uh, lymphoma support ribbon in honor of my wife. So, uh, um, so that's really, really cool. And I was very, very happy to, uh, to, to receive that. I'm still speechless a little bit. I don't know how to say thank you enough. Uh, but again, thanks Oz. Joe Smith is in the house out there. What's up, Joe Smith. Joe Smith is very cool. Joe Smith refers to himself in the third person. I think Joe <laughs> Smith might actually be the rock um, in disguise. There you kinda, go. Kind of sounds like The Rock a little bit. But. If you're missing well, Joe Smith's videos, then you're missing out. Joe Smith are. puts out some awesome stuff. Joe Smith in the chat. If you click on his name or on his avatar and you can go to his channel, give him a follow because there's some cool stuff happening. And then he's also – he promotes our channel all the time. He, and anybody that he likes and, and that you uh, get to know him a little bit online here, he'll promote your channel. Um and send people over to check you out. It's very, very cool. Let's put a link for his channel in the chat on the side, because if you just type in Joe Smith on YouTube, that brings up like 700 channels. <laughs> I hate to have to filter through just, all to find He just it. posted in the Did uh, he? chat. Okay, yeah. okay, cool, cool. All right, thanks, man. Very cool. All right. Well, so. well I, didn't, I didn't open carry today, 
but I did put out a video on GunStreamer in YouTube as well as uh, on Instagram. So I, I did a, I guess, a clip of the video, but I had the Ever Second Matters t-shirt patch and the Gun Channels patch. I saw that the video came through, and I threw it in my watch later, and I haven't had a chance to watch anybody's videos yesterday. If, if okay. you watch the video, check out the comments. I actually okay. got my first anti-gunner comment today. Really? Yes. Repeal the Second Amendment, it says. So wow. I left it on there yeah. because I, I haven't had a chance to go, and uh, it just happened within the last hour or so. Yeah. So, yeah, well, go check it out. Tell them what you think. <laughs> my troll hasn't showed up yet because I don't have any thumbs downs. These these live chats all get one thumbs down. I don't know who's doing it. They think they're hurting me, but any thumb is a is a good thumb as far as analytics go. So it's been oh, nice. Yeah. We we have a person in the gun channel circles that does that because it, mine mine get the thumbs down within about I get one. Most of my videos get yep. one. Yeah, it's, within, it's within about a minute of me posting the video or, or posting it live or what it not live, but you know, well yeah, live, yeah. but there's a bunch yeah. of it's midnight range TM. <laughs> <Indeed>. Nah, <laughs> I don't think it's midnight. But but see the All thing right. is the, All the right. guy the guy put the comment but didn't thumb it down though so ah. may, maybe he thumbed it up I don't know. I was Could wondering be. what you were talking about in that text you sent me over on uh on ghost chat because you said something about repeal the Second Amendment and I was like well I watched your video and then. I know it didn't get taken down, so now I understand what you're talking about. Yeah, it was some some. I've never seen the guy's name, but I, I thought it was kind of interesting because I was busy, you know, this evening, and it came through. But I didn't really, I didn't read anything until later. So yeah, cool. uh, that was pretty, pretty something different. Well, congratulations, you got your first <laughs> roll. <laughs> That's a big day in any uh, any YouTuber's life, right? If you want to see some goofy comments, go check out my uh, breaking news video, the one that's got over 250,000 views on it. And uh, some of those early comments, people are calling me everything but a, but a uh, nice person. And, and <laughs> some of the comments just kind of make me shake my head. And I've stopped kind of policing them. People can say whatever they want. I'm not responsible for what people want to post up there. But I do not condone... Uh, hanging the governor or shooting the governor or anything like that. Um, plus, most of those people haven't watched the whole thing. They don't realize that the governor that I'm talking about has been dead for over 200 years. So, uh, <laughs> If you watch it, watch the whole thing. Uh, yeah. Don't quit halfway through and start making stupid comments, please. Uh, because sometimes I call you out on them. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So... Anything else anybody wants to chip in on the uh, every second matter stuff, and then we'll kind of move over to the other the other topic of the night. Well, I, never I left my house, but I posted a picture on Instagram. Cool. It was fun making a picture. It was like two seconds. <laughs> I'm, I'm not on the. What is it, the IG? Is that what the young people say? Somebody said that out in the chat. Yeah. Howdy. No, they, Howdy no, they, no, they just call it know. Insta. They just, all the kids call it Insta out on Insta. I, think it's I just called it Insta, Insta, and Howdy called Insta. me out on it. Yeah. I don't know how old I was. I told him 48. I'm also yeah, on the Twitter. I just, think whoever yeah. said yeah. ID is wrong. I think it's Insta. That's what I hear all the time. I, too. Think, I think it's Inst because I, I don't think Inst. they they go. Let's just start calling it the deep. I. We'll just call it the I. I we'll just, start the trend right now. Either way, I'm not on it. The E. I like the E. I've cut I did. back and we're doing YouTube and, and Facebook and, of course, gun channels and gun streamer and, and that kind of stuff. And I don't spend, I'll be the first to admit, I don't spend near enough time on guntube.org. But you need to go check out guntube.org and help Nightstrike get that off the ground, too. Because eventually, YouTube's going to dry up. Facebook's going to boot us out. We won't have any place to talk about stuff except for these other platforms. And uh, nobody's going to find us if you don't know where to go to look for yep. us. And, and Night Strike so, told me last night that it was okay if everybody put nothing but cat videos on Gun <laughs> Yeah, it's all fine. Just no porn, no nudity. But anything else, he's not going to throw me off of there for. He said nothing but cat videos. He's tired of the gun, all the gun videos. He just wants cat videos on there now. All right. Well, my wife is off the camera, but she heard that. She's got plenty of cats. Here we go. I'm going to start right now. There we go. Her her own channel. There we go. That's it. I would like to mention cat videos. Oh, look at that! Is that ammo cat? 
Yeah, she's crashed, man. She's had a rough day. Wow. <laughs> uh, we've got one in our house that looks about like that. Oh, yeah. Is Edward, oh, yeah. Hey. Edward's over there. You can't see him here. Let's do this. You see Wake Edward up. over there on that pink. Up. You're on the internet. People want to talk to you. Wake up. It's the cat wars hey, right now. I'll just, I'll just stream this live over on GunTube. We'll just, I'll call it the, the live streaming cat channel, and I'll have like 100 million subscribers. And yeah. All right. We're back. No more Edward. All you can see is just a white fluff thing on top of a pink fluffy thing. So <laughs> he's out too. He doesn't care. Live streaming the kitty. <laughs> all right. So enough about cats. <laughs> Um, we all have open carried if we could, those of us that couldn't wish we could. And, uh, some people wish they could ever in their state. We've kind of established that sounds kind of like every second that we ever talked about this. So uh, I've good stuff going on out in the chat. Ohio 45 ACP is in the house. I haven't seen you in forever, dude. We met up when we were in Tulsa last year and I am so bummed that we're not able to make it this year, but everything just didn't line up. So Maybe next year we're going to make it, but not this year, not this fall either. So, all right. Well, we want to talk tonight about carrying. And I know some people in the panel here don't get to do that, but that doesn't mean that you don't have holsters. And when you go to range, uh, you have a range day and stuff like that, if your range allows it, you can still um, have a holster. And maybe you're practicing in your house um, for, you know, if you ever live in a state that, does allow it, or maybe you'll your state one day will change their minds and start to allow it, and you'll have a holster and stuff. Um, the The first thing I want to talk about is, and we'll just kind of go around the horn here a little bit, so that hopefully they don't try to talk over each other so much. Um, but uh, let's uh, let's talk about first off leather versus Kydex, and some people are okay with with both even. So, uh, Travis, we'll start off with you. Do you have a preference? Does it kind of depend on the situation? Or what uh, you yeah, I started off with the Kydex holster, just uh, getting the uh, Klinger holsters, you know, the different series that they make, the Klinger V2 yeah. Stingray or just Stingray holster. I like that, but, you know, you've always got that hard lump of plastic just sitting next to your side the whole time, so you, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but I do like, I've got the uh, Hidden Hybrid holsters right now, which is... Uh, Leather and Kydex, which I really do like. That's kind of my preference at this point. It does take a little bit of breaking in. And uh, either one of those two, I don't think you really can go wrong. I like the you know, like the Alien Gear style where it's a little bit more spread out over your waistline because it better distributes the weight, in my opinion. You don't have like a little lump just pulling down. So, um, But yeah, I mean, I, I think you really can't go wrong with either one personally, but that's just me. But then you say Kydex, there's so many different types of kydex holsters that are out there also so just standard sure. retention yeah kydex is kind of becoming um a catch-all word like xerox and kleenex and you know scotch yeah. tape. um not everything that is made out of plastic is made out of kydex that's actually oh, no. a, a yeah. trademarked brand name of uh thermoplastic right but we we just say kydex because it's just it's easier faster we could say plastic yeah. and it sounds cheap and kydex actually sounds like it's worth the 50 60 80 bucks you paid for it right so, yep. um, a lot of people out here are talking about revolvers need to be in a, in leather and autos can go in kind of whatever. Um, and I think sometimes there's kind of a, sometimes there's a disparity just in ages of people too. You know, a lot of traditionalists like a leather holster and, and some of the newer, younger, uh, people, you know, don't mind having something that's synthetic or whatever. Um, but, uh, Patriot, I know you do carry sometimes. What do you do? You have a preference, or does it kind of depend on the on the situation too? Actually, I started out with leather. Um, you know, I had some Gelco, uh, Bianchi. You know, inside the waistband stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I tried to get some Kydex, and I bought. I want to say it's a. It's outside the waist. It's just a paddle holster. Um, Anyways, the, the, I, I bought one that was inside the waistband. I thought it was great. Checked it out and didn't, you know, try it on at the gun shop, which you can't return them. And it's probably the worst thing I ever, I ever, ever seen in my life. Uh, the design is hor horrible. Uh, the slide is actually exposed and it, it doesn't work. So that, that's, that's an upcoming review. But that was actually a Kydex. Okay. And just it had the... 
I guess the edge of the slide was open. So when your belt on the inside of the waistband, your belt goes right through the ejection port. And so it basically locks your pistol in. <laughs> so yeah. it just doesn't work for me. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to do a video on it uh, here just <laughs> because it's, it's insane. It was, you know, $60, $70 holster, which isn't much, but it, it is. Well, it is, you know, though. One that you're not using. <laughs> Especially if you can't take it back. Yeah, and it you was a You a can't tell. I'm sitting here with a look of bewilderment on my face is why it would be designed <laughs> that way. It's really, I don't know. It was, it's, if you look at Legacy online, their site is kind of like a a la carte. You know, you can pretty much design what you want. You know, if, okay. if you want the little wedge to push it away from your, your grip into your side, that kind of stuff, if it's inside the waistband. Um, and the only thing that I could come up with is it was designed for a pistol with a, like a red dot or something. I, I'm, I'm not sure because, I mean, but, you know, you'd still think it would be, uh, you know, protected because that whole edge of your slide is open besides the very end. So it covers your front sight, but the rest is exposed and it's, it's, it's crazy. But I didn't, you know, realize it, you know, the pistol fit out great in the shop, but... Yeah. You know, next time I will drop my pants in the middle of the store. So I will well, verify that it works. <laughs> <laughs> but for right now, my, my favorite holster is the 1791 gun leather. I mean, I can't, I can't say enough good about that holster. Um, I have the inside the waistband for the um, P238 SIG and it, it's perfect. Cool. I, I've, I've I seen a few it. people talking up the 1791 holster. It's just, the thickness is so much better. I mean, you know, it's it's like if you have, you know, a regular quality and then you accidentally get, uh, you know, lent somebody's, you know, extremely expensive one, you know, the, the, just the quality difference. It's uh, um, as far as what I was used to, you know, it's, it's a big jump. So Sure, sure. Okay. All righty. Um, and, yeah, um, I realize now that I'm not being that good of a host when I was showing off my – custom-made holster from Ozzy Orsborn. Not everybody can can see what I'm showing them on the camera. And so um, this holster that I got, it's it's very high quality, good, good thick, very stiff leather um, as far as holding its shape. But then at the same time, um, and it, it's, I don't know how we molded this. I don't know how to make a holster, but uh, Ozzy knows what he's doing. It, it holds this gun in. Um, and when I was uh, reviewing it the other day in my video, I actually turned it upside down and shook it. Not super hard, but hard enough that it didn't just slide out. And, uh, uh, of course, that wasn't a loaded gun. It was an unloaded uh, with no no magazine in it. But still, it, it held it in place. But yet I can draw it very smoothly, very easily. Um, but it, it's a black and brown leather. It's, it's two-tone leather. It's got uh, – I don't know what the name for this style is. On the uh, – on the, the I guess the back – half the the end of the holster that's more towards my back it's got like one pancake loop and then the front loop isn't a pancake it's it's just a like a tunnel loop right behind where the actual holstered part of the gun of the where the gun goes in is right behind there so um holds it really well and with my thick uh bigfoot leather belt it's all i can do just to just thread this thing on and slide it into place um because everything's not broken in and, and smooth yet in the belt loops but uh Holds it pretty well upright, and it's fine because I, I don't intend to ever use this as a concealment holster. Um, my intention, and I've said this in the videos, my intention uh, when I was first looking for a holster um, that I could use, that I could get something with this ribbon on it is, and I, I got this idea from Ghost, actually. He's got a cool holster um, that's got the Marine Corps logo on it, and he said every time he opened carries in that holster, nobody ever brings up the fact that he's carrying a gun they just ask him about the holster where he got it from and he you know it starts a conversation and nobody's ever panicked or anything um because the holster takes the focus off of the, the gun that's in it and i thought well that's a cool idea what would i put on it because i'm not a veteran and i thought you know maybe a sports team or something i'm from nebraska but then i thought well how about a cancer ribbon a lime green cancer ribbon to support my wife um because uh, we can't cure it. We can only keep it in remission. So she's never going to get rid of it unless they have a breakthrough in medicine. And so we're always going to be fighting with this. And then I was going to be supporting her in it. So uh, Ozzy knew that. And I hadn't asked him to make a holster. I just asked him for a price. And then he uh, he sends me this. So it's pretty cool. 
But uh, that's my whole plan is if, if I get a chance to actually open carry, I'm hoping people ask me about the holster more than they do about the fact that I'm carrying a gun. And in Nebraska, not that big of an issue most of the time. So I don't think it'll be a big issue. But uh, all right, well, let's move back down the panel and we'll go to obnoxious leather, kydex, hybrid. What do you think? Uh, as my holster guy tells me, no one ever said I love the smell of kydex. <laughs> Yep, we'll give you that one. So, I, I have a few Kydex holsters, but the, the majority of mine are leather. I just find it more comfortable. It's They're easy to maintain. I mean, not Kydex isn't easy to maintain, but, mm -hmm. you know, when you've, when you've got a little bit of a, a done lap like I do. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yep, yeah. The the leather is the leather is nicer than having you know plastic rubbing against that dumb lap. It definitely doesn't gouge as much. I can say that. Um, and I've got something I'm going to bring up here in a little bit that addresses that same issue. I may or may not know exactly how you feel. Um, but no, it it can it can definitely be uncomfortable having that hard uh, hard plastic or hard kydex rigid kydex digging in in different places. And I know a lot of people will say. Uh, carrying isn't about comfort. It's about, you know, safety or whatever. But we all know that those of us who have carried for any amount of time anyway, we all know that that holster that's not as comfortable, we're not as likely to carry. And why not just shop around and get a better holster that you can carry all day instead of the one that you left home because you didn't want to put it on. Uh, you ran down to the grocery store for milk and something bad happened on the way there or the way back and you wish that you had it with you, you know? So there's something to be said for that. We've got a question out in the chat from Sand Hill's Sweetheart, wondering what in the world is Kydex? Um, yeah, it's it's heat form. Poor conservative says it's uh, it's heat form plastic. Um, all of the, uh, most of the holsters that you see me wear around, those black plastic ones, that's Kydex. So you can actually... Uh, Take that, and then a lot of people just put it in a press and heat it up and form it to the gun, and you can warm it up, bend it, kind of do whatever. So thanks for you all out in the chat who answered that before I saw the question and got to it. Um, okay, Kingpin, I know you don't have as much experience carrying as the rest of us, but I'm pretty sure you probably already had a chance to form an opinion, right? Uh, somewhat. I don't have any experience with any leather holsters. Okay. But, uh, I do have quite a few plastic ones already. And, uh, the gun snob made me a Kydex for my Security 9. So, when I practice, uh, carrying around the house, until I got the Kydex, they were all outside the waistband. So, I was basically carrying, doing, like, the open carry. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the one that he made me is inside the waistband. And it it feels really comfortable. Maybe I don't know any better, and uh, I just got it all wrong. But the plastic to me, just in my hand, definitely feels a little bit different than the Kydex. Now, actually having it on, all the other ones are outside the waistband, so I don't really know what it's like, you know, having it rub against my body all day long and different stuff like that. But just being able to feel it in my hand, you can tell the difference between this the the regular plastic in the uh, Kydex. Sure, absolutely. Yep, that's that's definitely true. So, and you know, you said you haven't really had any chance to to be around leather holsters or try those out yet. Yeah, no, I've never, except for you know, gun stores or you mm -hmm. know, where they got some old fashioned stuff and you get to pick them up and touch them. But actually, using a leather holster, no, I, I've got zero experience with that. Sure, sure. Okay. And then last but not least, Frankie, I don't know if we've really talked about this a whole lot when you've been with us, but uh, are you a concealed carrier? And you don't have to answer that if you don't want to. I am. I have okay. a license here. Uh, the good thing for Ohio is they're trying to do the whole constitutional carry thing, so we're hoping that passes soon. Very cool, very cool. So do you have a preference between synthetic or leather or hybrid? Kind of, and I'm going to do a little bit of show and tell on this one. Okay. 
So for my SIG that I got, I ordered this outside the waistband holster and leather from Craft, and mm-hmm. I really like it. It's making me kind of want to check out like uh, inside the waistband holsters for my smaller gun, my other SIG. Okay. But this is pretty comfortable. I mean, obviously, I'm not wearing it inside my pants, pants but this is pretty good. Sure. Um, now, my husband has something really cool. He has from G code this plastic that has this fuzzy on. And he says that when he wears it, he can't really notice that he has the gun. It's so comfortable. Awesome. And uh, it custom made a color so you can do all kinds of fun stuff, make it whatever color you want. So this will be something I'll get later so I can have an inside waistband holster that's more comfortable than the one that came with my SIG. Awesome. Is that a Glock with Talon grips on it? Yes. <laughs> Let me and do then, this without, I have to point this way because this is, I should probably stop presenting you so everybody can see me. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So that's exactly what I have. This this one is not clear, so I'm not going to point it the other direction because it would point right at Sandhill Sweetheart if I did that. So, uh, But yeah, I've got the, the rubber finish uh, Talon grips on, on mine, Glock 19. Love it, love it. Okay, so we've kind of gone around the horn and kind of trying to keep up with the chat a little bit. So what do you got there, Frankie? If you talk, we can see you. It says Home Defender on it. Awesome. I like that. And yeah, so let's let's show there. that to everybody again. Okay. Homeland Defender. Is that any kind of special edition from someplace, or is that just some stuff that uh, that he had put on there, or what's going on with that? It's special edition, and uh, okay. we found it in a used store that way. So really? So really hit the jackpot on it. That's pretty cool. That's very awesome. I like that. All right. We will go back to letting everybody show up. Okay. There we go. Um all right, a couple other things that we want to talk about tonight when we're talking about holsters. Um, oh, and I was going to throw out my um, my info there, too. This is the first leather holster I've ever had. I've never bought leather before. Um, I've tried several different brands of just plain old Kydex inside the waistband, outside the waistband. Um, you guys have seen my review. Um, if you haven't seen it, you can go watch it. But I did post a review of my Klinger holster for the uh, the MMP Shield, and, it, and I've got another one. It's a very similar holster from uh, We the People. It doesn't cost quite as much. Uh, those are great holsters. Don't get me wrong. And for the money, I don't think you can go wrong if if it's comfortable for you. I just am shaped in such a way that it digs in if I'm not standing up all day, and if I'm driving or if I'm at work, I'm not standing up all day and i can't say that i wear this at work but if it ever would happen nobody would know it was there um but i just don't want this thing digging in so i don't wear those much and i'm trying to figure out if i can sell them or throw them in giveaways or what we're going to do with them um but i don't use those holsters my favorite hands down and i know a lot of people think it's a gimmick i swear by alien gear and i know ghost and clover and and Mike Woodland, some of those guys are are testing them out because they they talk to the the Alien Gear people over at Shot Show this year, um, and it sounds to me from what I've heard so far they're they're not they're not hating them either they're kind of digging them, but uh, as far as comfort and a, a gun that I can put on or a holster I can put on inside the waistband and then forget that it's there, no matter what I'm doing if I'm sitting standing moving around driving. Uh, laying on the couch, I've taken a nap on the couch or on the bed and not taken my holster and my gun off and forgotten it was there because the way that the Alien Gear, especially the new series, the Shapeshift, is built, it's cushy, it doesn't dig into you, um, it's really cool. So I say check it out. It's worth it's worth what you spend. If you, uh, if you want to have any, know anything about them, just drop me an email. Hit me on Facebook and I'll tell you what I know. I haven't made it yet. I just I've got to get some reviews put up of that stuff so everybody knows how I feel. One thing to Hold say on. about that because I'm somebody that's you know since switched over from from doing 100% Kydex to you know a leather back or neoprene back with Kydex front. That back if it's not Kydex, it allows it to kind of 
mold and contour to fit your shape. Plus, I don't know. I just think you can do like a three or four o'clock carry so much easier with something like a Alien Gear Holster versus Kydex, especially sitting down like you were saying. Because the Kydex, like I said, it's like having a big, like a hard plastic bump sitting up against your hip. So anytime you'd sit down, it's just pressing up against you. And it seems like those the Alien Gear Holsters or the Hidden Hybrid, hybrid ones, they just kind of mold and fit better. Well, and it's I can tell you, feel. I mean, I'll, I'll show myself off here, but the issue that I have when this goes in the, in the waistband is in the the clinger that I have, you know, it, it can'ts about like this. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's this corner. If I can get it up here in the camera, this front corner digging in, and it, it digs into me about right about right here. And it just it, it makes a raw spot by the end of the day. If I'm only wearing it for an hour or two, it's not so bad. But any longer than that, and it just it's uncomfortable. The, the cool thing that I like about it, it's super easy to, to put on and take off one-handed in the way that it works. Um, it's not tuckable, so if you work a job where you have to tuck your shirt in and you may or may not want anybody to know that you're exercising your Second Amendment rights, then that holster doesn't work. You have to get something tuckable. So... Rob says, don't put the Alien Gear stickers on your car. Um, I'm curious why. I don't know what happened, but I'm curious why we don't put the Alien Gear stickers on the car now. I haven't. I got them on my gun safe. No, a lot of guys, they say that this is kind of a giveaway that there's possibly firearms in your vehicle. Because yeah, I always okay. used to have a Magpul sticker on the back window of my car, and it's I, I, I have since taken that off. Yeah, that's anybody, I don't know. If I guess if you got a whole back window full of gun stickers, you somebody might be more likely to break a window and check your glove box. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. Probably like people that put the expensive stereo stickers on their windshields, you know, like the audio companies and stuff, and uh, kind of gives it away like you've got some some pricey merchandise in your vehicle. Yeah, that's very true. Um, real quick, out in the chat, Jason Stewart is saying he's only carried OWB. And his grips are constantly banging against everything. Does inside the waistband help? Um, it can. It also depends on if you have a cover garment, too, I think. Um, if you live in a climate where you can wear a jacket or something and cover that up, then that's going to help protect it. Um, but, yeah, sometimes inside the waistband can help just because the, the gun, I mean, just stands to reason, right? It's inside your pants, your belt line. And so um, it's not sticking out as far. And depending on the design of the holster, sometimes they're designed to where they take your grip and kind of, you know, push it up into you a little bit. And uh, that makes a that makes a huge difference. So uh, um, yeah, that can definitely that can definitely help switch into that, Jason. Or like I said, it also depends on your uh, on your outside the waistband holster. Some of them are more designed for concealment than others too so um if you have a super nice fancy carry gun and you don't want it banged up then you should not make that your carry gun i'll say that right now that's kind of like having a super fancy looking race car it's only going to stay that way if you never take it to the track so keep that in mind too don't don't put a you know two thousand dollar safe queen in your holster and then be mad if it gets dinged up a little bit so obnoxious you listening there because <laughs> he's got the fleet of beautiful handguns man. You, yeah. But yeah yeah but i don't have any i don't have any safe queens i'll sh i'll shoot every one of these so none of them are they're all a working man's gun it's okay if they get yeah except for, except for that or... that dan wesson that's not a working man's gun that thing's ugh. <laughs> That's that that is that's a safe clean slash range toy because I'll never be confident in it enough to carry it. Sure. All right. So, anybody have anything else before we move on to the next part of the the carry stuff? You want to throw in there as far as does the kydex or the leather or anything that we've talked about a little bit? Do your research on your holster before you buy it. Like, do read some reviews and stuff because. I know I did one for a Blackhawk Serpa holster that I picked up at Walmart, and then I had tons of people freaking out in the comments saying, "Dude, it's gonna your gun's gonna go off when you put it in there, and you gotta watch out because of the way that it, the latch releases on it." They say if you get any kind of a rock wedged in there and you push down or pull back, you'd risk you know having your gun go off. So 
I mean, these are things I never heard about until after I posted the video. So just do some research a little bit. Make sure the gun doesn't have some sort of inherent flaw to it uh, or something that a lot of people complain about because chances are you might run into that issue too. Yeah, and, and I would say that um, if you're actually going to concealed carry and there's a chance one day that you might have to draw your gun to save your life, then anything mechanical can and will fail. And Murphy's Law dictates that's going to happen when you least expect it or when it's the least convenient to fail, right? Nothing fails until you go to use it. And so I have a Serpa. That was my first ever holster, actually. Um, but uh, I don't use it to carry, number one, because it doesn't conceal for anything. Uh, unless you're wearing a coat, it's not concealed. Um, but uh, the, the thing about the Serpa is I stopped carrying it just because the retention on that, yeah, it's mechanical. And I don't want that thing to fail and, and either have it not hold the gun when it needs to or hold the gun when it needs to let go. Both things are super, super bad. We don't want that to happen. Um, so if you're if you're working with leather, there's two things that happen. Number one, sometimes it's just it's just tight and you get your retention just from the leather being tight. Sometimes you can get a retention screw that you know sandwiches things together tighter. Um, a lot of leather holsters also have that uh, thumb brake strap so that it's it i guess that's not passive retention right that's active retention they call it uh you actually have to unsnap that strap before you can draw the gun um so that's great retention a lot of the plastic and kydex holsters they just uh they kind of just your gun snaps in and it just takes some pressure and it eventually lets go as it as it comes back out and you can actually hear it literally snap um as you as you holster it or unholster it so uh you know it just yeah like travis said do your research the thing is um we've talked about this before when it comes to holsters if you carry very often or carry very long you're gonna get a bunch of them you're gonna compile them you're gonna keep trying until you find the perfect one and then eventually you figure out there is no perfect one it's kind of like shoes there's no one pair of shoes that you can wear every day all day for every situation and holsters are the same way sometimes you want leather sometimes you want synthetic sometimes you want both um so sometimes you have to have multiple holsters for different situations um that you're carrying and um sometimes that means different kinds of retention and things like that so you just got to practice practice that draw with every one of them so you know you know how to draw you know what you're doing uh, Agorizer wants to know if the alien snap is good as a full kydex. Nothing snaps as well as my uh, Bravo concealment holsters do. Um, those really snap. It's it's loud. Um, Clinger snaps pretty well. The alien gear is built differently because it's not it's not plastic on both sides. It's more of that uh, the hybrid style, kind of like, like a um, what's the ones down in Arkansas or Missouri um, crossbreed, similar to that. Um, in fact, Travis, do you have anything yeah. to uh, say real quick? I'm going to run upstairs. It'll be back in about one minute. Uh, I'm going to grab my alien gear. I left it upstairs. I'll just kind of show that off a little bit here. Yeah, um, yeah, Travis that's fine. Take over. Um, you know, one thing you might notice is that the, the prices, too, vary a lot on holsters. And sometimes I don't understand why, you know, one company might charge 70 or $75 for a Kydex holster. And you might find a Kydex holster from another company. And it's going to be almost identical. They might charge 50 or 60. Um, one thing that pulled me to, well, one thing that pulled me to Clinger Holsters was because they were the only company at the time that made an inside the waistband uh, holster for my FNS 9C. <clears throat> I bought one as soon as it came out. And I'm not kidding, within about two or three weeks, they were already um, featuring a holster for it. They actually were advertising for it on eBay. And so I really became a fan of Clinger Holsters. Uh, but like I said, it... They're not the most comfortable when you wear a solid Kydex holster. Anytime you sit down, if you do a four o'clock position or anything like that, three to four, anything like when you're riding in your vehicle and stuff, it presses up against you really hard. So like, like, like Sandhills was saying, I'm a big fan of like a hybrid style holster. That's got either neoprene or leather backing. And then a Kydex shell that the gun goes in three o'clock position. Like he was saying, you can nap in something like that, especially when you break them in. You know, you don't even know you have it on anymore, especially if you wear all the time. There you go. Here. Oh, I'm fat. I'm winded. I'm in stairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is uh, this is my alien gear. Um, 
they call this the shape shift. They also call it their, their inside the waistband 4.0. Um, you can see it's got the twin belt clips. The thing I like about these, first of all, unlike other uh, previous generations, these don't have screws that back out. So no need for Loctite or anything. Um, and they're adjustable height, if you can see that up here. They're just kind of a kind of like a key lock or something. So if you want to change your ride height, you just turn them. Whoops. Didn't have that on the camera. You just turn this to 180 degrees and it pops out. You can put it in a different spot and then turn it and it's locked in. And then you've got your different height, cant, all that stuff. So put that back. The thing about um, this one, it snaps a little bit and it's adjustable. And I'm going to take this apart and just kind of show people kind of how this is built. Um, it's not leather. This is a synthetic, they call it alien skin. If, if you've ever had just an outside basketball, a rubber basketball, kind of feels like that hmm. um that's kind of the texture of it kind of grippy but not is that oh kinda yeah it does, look like, it does look like a like a worn down basketball doesn't it pretty much does and yeah there's a little texture to it and if you can kind of see it there in the I don't know if i can get it to focus right there it goes um it's not as pebbled as a basketball but um the way that this thing works it's actually there's a piece of stainless steel inside here and you can kind of see the way it flexes the stainless steel is sewn inside there spring steel so it gives it its its shape but then the edges are bound with something you know just some nylon or something but it doesn't cut into you these edges are nice and rounded and soft so i kind of like that neoprene back ventilated so it doesn't breathe super well but it breathes better than You'd expect neoprene to breathe. Um, and then you can kind of see it's all shaped to me, you know. Um, but what I like about this system is with one little, this little retainer, I turn that half or a quarter turn and it comes off. And then this whole thing, this little piece slides off of here. And then the shell comes off. And I've got a different shell upstairs for the Glock and I can just slap that on instead. And it takes me about 30 seconds to get this ready to go. It's all dusty and dirty in there um, to get this ready to go for the other pistol. So that's pretty cool. But the retention actually is in, in this piece right here. Um, there's actually a little catch. I don't know if I can get you to where you can see it. It's right, right in there. There's a little catch that hooks the front of the trigger guard. And you can actually take the little piece that I took off, stick it in here. Oh, I'm hitting stuff with I had stuff popping up on my screen because stuff's hitting <laughs> buttons. Okay, so there's a little square hole right here by my finger. And this little key that came off goes in there. And you can turn this and adjust your tension back and forth to where it, it holds the gun tighter or, or a little more loose. This one is clear now. And... Just hey, real quick, does that ever lose tension at all or not? I've never really had it be an issue. Okay. Um, if it does, you can kind of you can kind of crank it back down again. It it's mm -hmm. not really a problem. Okay. And then you can see on what's inside the holster when this goes in, it snaps pretty well. It snaps pretty loud. And then of course this part is up against the backer, so that's what you're actually leave the gun in it if you want to put it back on oh, its backer take this little retaining slide put it back on and then your locker piece and order turn back into place and then you've got your whole gun again your whole holster again um, but you can adjust that back and forth and make that fit however you you want to if you want a faster draw or you know, it's it's not like we're likely to ever do cartwheels and stuff, right? So well, like sixth grade gym class, you know. I mean, I, I try to do cartwheels, but it didn't work. So right, but you don't actually <laughs> teach sixth grade gym class now, right? Yep. Like you don't go in there when the sixth graders are doing gym and no, do a cartwheel no. with them, right? So you're okay. No, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> so, but that, I, don't do any, I don't do any backflips on the dance floor either. So I'm, that's what I like about this this alien gear <laughs> system, and they make the the kit that this came in 
It's got four different holsters in one. You can actually take that little piece that covers the trigger guard off, and there's another full half like this, the other side of it, that slides together. And then you can have your uh, you know, your paddle, your belt slide, and it's actually completely, it'll go 360 degrees. It just kind of locks into place with a, a push button, kind of a like a spline deal. Um, is that what I'm thinking of? Like when a like when a PTO shaft goes together, a drive shaft goes together. It's kind of like that. Do you see Keith's question about midterms? Uh, no, I didn't. I got stuff coming through here. Hold on, we got super chats coming in too. Kiki Sphincter said, "Love the karaoke skills. They were sweet." Yeah, he commented on that video last night <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Um, that was a year ago in Tulsa this weekend. Infamous. Infamous, infamous karaoke, <laughs> baby. Oh, man. We're not going to be there this year to, to replay it. No. Um, the new Smith & Wesson Shields announced. No, I have not seen those. We're going to have to check those out. I haven't seen those yet, Kinky. Uh, now you got me curious. I'm not going to buy a new shield. I like the shield I got. This one also has... This one's got the... Uh, Talon grips on it too. I got these for this gun before I got them for the Glock actually, because this gun really needed them. Um, I don't like how sloppy it felt in my hand without any grip to it. It wasn't aggressive like the 2.0s are. So this again, it's kind of like that alien skin. It's kind of like a basketball or something, um, but it just really lets it lets you grip it really well. So I like that. Okay, enough about my holsters. I didn't mean this to be necessarily a show and tell. Um, what what question? What did I miss a question? He asked if how the mag carriers are with the alien gear. Oh, the mag carriers? I've got one. Um, I like it. I will not wear it inside the waistband. It uh, it sticks out further than than this does inside the waistband, and this isn't bad. I mean, it's there's not a lot of thickness there really, so. It disappears pretty well, but the uh, the mag carrier, if you wear it inside the waistband, it, it's going to make your belt stick out about that far on your side. So, and I don't wear my magazine on my strong side. That's my offhand grabs the magazine. So I won't wear it inside the waistband, but it comes set up for that or outside. And so I just wear it sometimes if I don't have to tuck my shirt, I'll just wear it kind of horizontal outside the waistband. And uh, it works pretty slick. Sometimes I do that. Um, you can get different size buckets for it, you know, so if you've got like the shield and the, the Glock don't have the same thickness of magazine, so they don't interchange. Um, I've only got one that fits the shield mags, but uh, sometimes I use that when I don't have to tuck my shirt in. Most of the time what I'm actually carrying my spare mag in is just, this is from sticky holsters. You can get this and nothing else out of my pocket. So this is a sticky holsters mag carrier, and this works no matter if I'm using the shield mags or the Glock mags or whatever. Um, it's actually got a little deal that's it's kind of rolled up in here in the bottom, and it keeps stuff from going in too deep uh, if you've got shorter magazines. But uh, it works really well. Um, I like sticky holsters. I've got one that fits my Glock, and I was using that for a while actually in the waistband. It works not as well as I want, but it's great for the inside my pocket. Um, spare magazine because it never moves when I grab my magazine it stays put the magazine comes out and sometimes when I'm practicing I do just draw that magazine out of my pocket and test it out works pretty slick so so uh, sorry uh, kinky I didn't see that question I was focusing on the on the super chats there so okay I want to talk a, a little bit tonight about um, where are people carry too now this could be outside the waistband or inside the waistband. It could be pocket, ankle, shoulder, you know, whatever you like, on body, off body sometimes even. Um, but we're going to go back around the horn again and just find out uh, how people like to carry and what their uh, um, what their preferences are. And we'll kind of go, I don't just want to know what you do. I want to know why it works for you, okay, because there's going to be people maybe that watch this that uh, it doesn't matter what we do because what I do doesn't fit you anyway, necessarily. Um, but if I tell you why I like the things that I like, why I don't like the things that I don't like, then maybe you can help form a little bit of an opinion for yourself based on your own experiences too. So we'll go back the other direction. We'll start with Frankie and find out um, 
if you have a preferred way to carry or again it might depend on the situation too um so what uh, what works for you as far as carrying um where and how you carry maybe maybe we'll start with frankie i don't know if you heard me say your name frankie oh i didn't i'm sorry it's okay I'm trying to make some tea <laughs> um i do off body carry i carry in a concealed uh purse just because that's what's working currently for me and okay. I couldn't say I wouldn't carry everywhere I go. Okay. Okay. Just Alrighty. to be coy about that. What's that? Just to be kind of correct, politically correct about that or whatever. Sure, sure. Well, we know that there's a lot of places, um, even in states where carry is legal, um, a lot of places where it's not legal to carry no matter if you have a permit or not. So nobody wants to get into trouble. We're not lawyers. We're not law enforcement officers here. We can't tell you what's legal in your state. We can't even always tell you what's legal in our own state. And in no way whatsoever does anybody on this panel or in this chat or myself make any recommendations telling you this is what you should do. We just want to share what we do or what we won't do. So now with that public service announcement out of the way, Gary is in the house. I didn't even see you there for a while, um, and I haven't acknowledged you yet. Gizzard, what's going on, sir? How are we doing? Uh, doing good, thanks. Thanks for being right. Sorry, it took me so long. Uh, my email was acting up, and I didn't realize I even had a link until about five minutes ago. So that's okay. No worries, bud. Um, better late than never. You're just fashionably late, right? Yeah, that's me. We'll save the the best for last, maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you missed the question earlier about. Uh, well, first of all, were you able to open carry today at all? Uh no. But I, I only carried basically out to the car. And then from the car into the house, so basically outside of my own house was only about 10 feet from the car to the door. So <laughs> at work, of course, I have to leave it in the car. So, Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So, um, and then also we went around the horn earlier to ask if uh, people have a preference between uh, leather holsters and, and Kydex or other synthetics and plastics or sometimes a hybrid. Um, and I know sometimes it depends on the situation, but uh, do you have a preference of, of those? Well, I primarily pocket carry, so my holsters really neither. Okay. Although I do have IWB and OWB holsters. Uh, and the OWB ones I have are primarily Phobus paddle holsters, so those are uh, plastic. Sure. Yeah. And inside, inside, I've got, uh, well, the one I do like is a combination of leather. Leather and Kydex. Leather back and Kydex. Okay. Holder. That's, you said that's inside the waistband? Yeah. It's a uh, it's a Celtic. Okay. Celtic holster. Hmm. I, haven't, I don't think I've even seen those before. That's cool. Um, real quick, I know he's not here anymore, but Kingpin had to run. So uh, thanks, Kingpin, for being here with us. Always a pleasure having him in here. Um Okay, so and that answers my other question as far as inside or outside, or for you, it's mostly pocket. You said, well, yeah, and uh, the primary reason for that is this uh, Dunlap's disease that I have, which is where the belly Dunlapped over the belt line, you know, we, pretty much. So we've talked about that already tonight. That some of us may or may not know what you're talking about, <laughs> but uh, well, it's just more comfortable for me. It sure. just is. Sure. No. Nope, no problem. Um, Okay, so we'll move on to about this. When you carry, do you have a preferred uh, position that you carry and, and method, or is it kind of – I know that sometimes people – eventually somebody's going to say it depends on the situation. Um, mostly my preferred position is prone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, uh, no, I you just lay your, lay your gun down on its belly and carry it that way? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Case, well, you give it a you know you give it a little bra bonnet's belly. It's a good boy. It was a good gun. <laughs> good gun. Right. Right. We just have to we have to love him up a little bit, right? It was a good boy. Yeah. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Uh, uh, I carry uh I carry OWB about three, three thirty, four o'clock. Uh little leather, you know, with my leather holster. So okay. I tried when I first started carrying, I carried uh in waistband and like we've said before the Dunlap disease got the better of me sure so, 
And I got oh. to the point where I realized that nobody's looking at my waist. So, yeah, I don't have a waist that's worth looking at. Yeah. So, so it, you, it, get, you can get by with carrying. You know, a lot of people think, oh, you can't carry. You're going to print. You're going to, you're going to show. Nobody's looking there. Look, man, we got the best tactical muffin tops McDonald's could buy. All right. Right. That's right. Tactical Let's get dad that out box. right now. And crispy, tactical muffin top. Tactical muffin top and tactical dad box. Backed that's up by Krispy Kreme on, on your. Yep. <laughs> that's right. You don't have to have kids. Nobody's looking there. So if you're if nah. you're concerned about carrying on waste, you know, OWB, <laughs> and you're thinking you're going to print. If you if you're if you live someplace that's really strict on uh, on the carry rules and printing, which I don't think there's any place out there that's that's you know that strict on it, then maybe you got to worry about it. But I I've carried on OWB for five years now that I've been allowed to carry, and with basically with the t-shirt unless it's pulled out and I've got a jacket on over it. I mean, nobody's, nobody's looking. I've had, I haven't had anybody other than, you know, another, another gun guy that was uh, also the guy when I was, was in uh, car shows, you know, saw him at another show and we went up and hugged each other and we felt each other's holsters. So and we'll say, yeah, he might've actually been checking you out, not the gun. Yeah. <laughs> And that's fine. I mean, there's nothing, you know, I, no, I, don't, up I don't blame him at all. Went up and hugged the guy and, you know, we, yeah. each, felt, we each felt each other's holsters and kind of, you know, that's mm -hmm. like, that put your finger over your, shh, don't yep. tell anybody. Yep. That look you get when you know, <laughs> notice that somebody else is carrying too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. It's a, it's a shared secret then. Um, No, that's, that's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, I, I just want to shout out Ozzy Osbourne is in the house tonight he has made it into the youtube chat so oz i wanted to show a couple things off first of all this is also what came with my holster i got a cool poker chip that says ozzy on it and there's a, a wolf barking at the moon there so that's pretty cool, that uh, cool. also ozzy while you're watching i am showing off your wares dude this is still the coolest thing that anybody's ever sent me and it's Definitely the coolest holster I've got. This is way cooler than Alien Gear. Um, doesn't conceal as well, and that's not what it's for. It's to make a statement, and uh, that's the whole point of it. So, dude, again, thank you so much. That's cool. Um, all right. So, Patriot, when you carry, do you have a specific um, location you, you prefer? Does it kind of depend on your situation? Yeah. I usually carry uh, about... Th 3 30 4 o'clock it's usually the the belt loop that's about uh i guess four o'clock or so just next to that so that i i would carry inside the waistband okay um if i'm in you know a suit or dress clothes like dress pants i'll carry it at three o'clock because it seems a little bit better especially with the jacket and you know if i had to get to it it's it's a little you know more forward so, but inside the waistband is usually what how I I carry, um, and depending on the pant too, as far as like the dress pants, I I like the the adjustable style. I guess they they got kind of a uh, like an elastic slip side to them, um, so it's nice if you carry outside the waistband, your pants still fit, and if you carry you know a bigger gun or something different. You know, it's kind of adjustable. I mean, it's for, you know, the guys that, you know, have big lunches or something and it loosens up or whatever. But <laughs> that and the click belt. I, I do use my Core Essentials belt, and that's nice because it, it also kind of takes up the slack uh, depending on how you carry. If you carry outside the waistband, it's, it's nice because it'll cinch up a little bit better. Sure. Yeah, I have never tried one of those click belts or track line belts, but they look pretty neat. Yeah, I have that was ratcheting adjustments. It it was actually my first first real gun belt, you know, from graduating from just a stiff, you know, leather belt or whatever. Sure. And I won't I won't uh, go back to a normal belt. Um, and that's I want to bring up belts if we have time tonight before we sign off. Um, up in the chat earlier, Too Hotty was asking me about leather footwear versus 
canvas athletic shoes and stuff like that. And I don't want this to be a shoe chat. Um, but uh, anybody that wants to sound off on shoes, go ahead and do that in the chat. Uh, but we're not we're not going to uh, interrupt holsters and belts for for shoes and boots right now. Maybe some night we can do that. Well, those those uh, kangaroo shoes we had when we were kids, they did have a tactical pocket in them, so you could put spare rounds in there. A zipper pocket in the uh -huh. tongue. I had those. I had a pair of those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kangaroo, so cool. Kangaroos. I'm waiting for them to remake those. Those are awesome. I know, right? And some Car cargo years. shoes. Cargo shoes. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to go off on the shoe rabbit hole, but and they were I'm just, I'm just joking around. Right, you can't get any more. And they were endorsed by the greatest running back of all time, Walter Payton. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> I wonder who you're going to bring up there, but yes, I would probably agree with Walter Payton. So, okay. So we'll move to Travis. Yeah. As far as where you carry. How do you carry that kind of stuff? Everywhere I possibly can uh, <laughs> that I'm legally allowed to, which, you know, half I, my I day I can't. But on the weekends I can and summer vacation I can. Um, Is there any locations uh, on your body or off your body? Yeah, it's going to be it, – it's always on body, either inside the waistband or outside the waistband. And it, a lot of it has to do with the weather. Um, when we're road tripping, visiting family, it's winter time. I've got a winter coat on. I'm not going to take it off unless I'm – in a house or something, I will outside the waistband carry because of just vehicle for me, vehicle comfort. Now that was before I'd switched over to my new holster, which sits on a three o'clock position. Um, and weather has a lot to do with it. Also before with that Kydex holster, it was a little bit harder for me to conceal it because of printing, uh, in the summertime, you don't have to wear a second shirt, you know, whatever. So weather has a lot to do with whether I'm going to inside the waistband or outside the waistband. I also do occasionally pocket carry the EC nine S so I want to take the dog out and I don't have my jeans on with a belt. Um, I've got a little Kydex cover that goes over the trigger guard in the EC9S and I'll throw that in and uh, just take that out. So, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's pr primarily inside the waistband, outside the waistband. I'd almost say it's almost a 50, 50 split in the wintertime, but in the summertime it's going to be more inside the waistband. But, you know, like you said before here in Nebraska, I could outside the waistband and nobody would really bat an eye because it's not uncommon to see people carrying. It's not, very common, but you do see it, you know, from time to time. And I've never heard of anybody getting the cops called on for open carrying, going to the grocery store, the gas station or Walmart or whatnot. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard about that either, which no, unless it's posted. Um, yeah. In which case, I mean, those of us who carry, we kind of just, that also becomes something that you get used to doing. You look, when you go into <clears> the <throat> you look for that sign. Um, I mm -hmm. don't know about every state. I know some states, um, the sign doesn't mean anything. It's not illegal. It's just if they see it and they ask you to leave, you have to because otherwise it's criminal trespassing. But the sign isn't legally binding. In Nebraska, it is. And the worst part about that sign is there's no standardized sign, number one. There's no standardized location for that sign. As yep. long as you can see it as you're coming in the front door, um, that's all that's required in Nebraska. And if you miss it because you went into Cheesecake Factory in Omaha, Nebraska, near the West Roads Mall, because they stuck it beside the door in the side light window, clear against the ground behind a shrub, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's crap. And I would suggest everybody, uh, if you're in the Omaha area and you want to go to Cheesecake Factory and you have a gun, don't miss that sign. Don't take your gun in there. Um and then put in a good word for us to the manager that it's BS and they should move that sign, put it right on the front door. The uh, real quick, the charter, you know, the spectrum internet offices, because here in Nebraska, we have very limited offerings for who you get internet from. They have a little, they, they have it, no concealed weapons, just in print with like a knife and a gun. And it's about four inches off the bottom of the glass door. So when you're walking down the strip mall, walking down the sidewalk to go into the, the charter office, you don't even see it. In fact, the first time I went in there, I didn't. Now, I'm not going to say whether or not I was caring, but I was pretty disappointed to see how poor of a location it is. Because who looks down at the bottom of a door as you're trying to go up? A, you know, mm -hmm. it just didn't make any sense. And so I told them, they said, oh, it's company policy. I said, but yeah, but the concealed carriers aren't the ones that, you know, commit the crimes. I tried having a discussion with a guy, but he was just a yes man for the company and not a, not a manager, you know. So it and does it, make it, yeah, you need to call corporate if you want to try to change. Just real quick in the chat, double A. Hey. Edward, Edward says hi. So say hi, double A. He says hi. Okay. Now I'm covered in fur. Um, the long white hair sticks to everything but that cat. Let's follow my cat and see where she goes. And I wear a lot of black. So that works out well. So, okay. So, uh, um, 
Yeah, and that's the same way with uh, with Cheesecake Factory in Omaha. <laughs> I had I been carrying when I was in there the first time, I didn't see that sign until I was walking out because the glass is also tinted. So it's either tinted or it's reflective, but either way, it's almost impossible <laughs> to see it. Even if you know it's there, it's hard to spot. And if you don't know it's there, you're not going to see it until you walk out. Um, yeah, it's not not good. But uh, NFOA, Nebraska Firearms Owners Association, has a list on their website of places um, with signs that are kind of sneaky or hidden. Um, and it is on that list now. I've added it. So they've also got a list of places in Nebraska that are gun friendly and people have had good experiences. And that list is nice and long, too. That's pretty cool. Um, if you haven't gone to uh, NebraskaFirearms.org, even if you're not in Nebraska, go check out the list that they've compiled of both places. It's pretty neat. Well, if it's a franchise, there's a chance that all those restaurants or stores are going to be having the same policy if it comes down from corporate. Yeah. And, so and always that possibility. Of, I know some corporations have that policy, like uh, Buffalo Wild Wings is one. Yeah. So we've got one here in town. It's not posted anywhere in their store. So in that case, if it's not posted, don't ask, don't tell. Yeah. That's what I would... That's what I would say. Uh, if it's posted, don't ask, don't tell. It no longer becomes uh, relevant in Nebraska. So, so all right here. Um, okay, I think we've gotten through everybody going around the panel. What you got there, Obnoxious? That is an app uh, that everybody can get. Oh, nice. It's called Posted. It's down there, and it's got next to my next to the CCW app. It's not really coming in clear it's kind of yeah. grainy yeah but it's just called posted post is the name of the app yeah posted is the name of the app is that an iphone or an android phone it's an iphone okay and you can go in and search nearby and you can also add stuff to it and um you got your anti-gun businesses here and your pro-gun businesses here that you can add i see posted is it from Workman Consulting LLC? Uh, probably. Does it have like a little? It's got a map of the U.S. and a green circle and a red circle with a stripe through it. Yep, probably. Oh. That's the little app has. Uh... That kind of looks like what I'm seeing. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's ninety nine cents on the Google Play Store. I might just so when account. you when you post a location in there, does it make a note of it and then it adds it to the database and then like more people verify it to tell you whether or not it's yep true or whatever? Okay, okay, cool. And you've also got the uh, option where you can you can verify. So if you're <clears throat> then you can if you're adding something, uh, I don't know if it's going to come in with the be in the light screen, but it's got uh, you can get the GPS and the address and you can take the take a photo. And then submit it. And if you're verifying something, you can take a photo and verify it, or you can just, you know, click the button to verify it. Kind of makes me want a road trip to Omaha now. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. <laughs> Excuse me, go to Omaha and just. In fact, I need to do that anyway. Next time in Omaha, I should just swing by and take a picture of that sign and just post it on my Facebook page on Sand Hill Shooter there. We just should just go. Right. We should go business to business down in the old market and just compile the database and let people know. Just say, "Hey, are you guys concealed carry friendly?" And then maybe educate the businesses a little bit on it. And if they say no, then we just mark it off on the app. Yeah, there you go. That kind of work. We can do that in our own towns. Yeah, so of course. Everybody can. If you get that app, it's not a bad idea. Maybe you can check that out in your own town sometime. Um, okay, so we've kind of gone through everybody. I want to cover this real quick. We may or may not get to belts, but this I think is a little more. Um, relevant topic because this is kind of divisive among carrier concealed carriers especially um not so much among, i guess really among open carriers but um on body versus off body carry and i'm going to start off with my opinions um i guess i didn't finish this up i generally carry inside the waistband and it's usually the about the 330 position um Three to three thirty, I can actually hide. I use the corner of that tactical muffin top to uh, the gun, the shield in this holster. It just kind of tucks right up underneath that uh, that soft part of me, and it just kind of disappears. So, alrighty. So, um, on body versus off body. I know that a lot of people will say there's no, there's never a good excuse for off body carry. Um, 
and I know that on body is preferable, but I don't think it's true that there's no excuse for off body. Uh, I think there's a time and a place for just about every style of carry and it, it has its time and it has its place. Um, the only thing is if you're going to off body carry, just plan ahead and know what you're getting into. If, if you have a, a gun purse, like Frankie said, then that purse can never be out of your, out of your possession. You know, you can't uh, go to a party and put your purse and your coat in the bedroom and leave it unattended. You're still responsible for it. Right. So um, if you're at a party and there's drinking, you probably shouldn't have your gun with you anyway. But no matter what's happening, if it's in a purse or a fanny pack, that needs to stay on your body. Or, you know, be um, if it's in a you know shopping cart, you need to have it maybe take the, the child safety belt strap and run it through your purse strap so nobody can just run off with it. Because um, you still have to be responsible for your firearm, right? So if we can kind of roundtable this a little bit, we don't have to go around the horn, but... What does everybody think? Do you think that there can be a time? I know what Frankie's going to say. Um, can there be a time when off-body is okay, or are you 100% against it? It's it's never okay. I think that off-body is a perfect complement to your on-body carry. I mean, there's companies that make coats and jackets now that have concealed carry pockets in them. And what a, what a great way to easily conceal, can easily conceal a second firearm. I wouldn't say make it your primary draw firearm because it could be faster for you to draw from your inside the waistband holster. But I think like uh, the Bernie company that makes like, they make coats like Carhartt. They make an off-body carry coat for wintertime. Man, you can put a G17 in there and on, on one side and two or three mags on the left side and nobody would tell because the pockets, the way they're padded and designed. So I think it's a fantastic way to carry a second firearm if you want. I think so. Real quick, I want to interrupt just because I don't think I've ever seen Codename Nebraska before in one of these chats. So Codename, welcome. And uh, looks like you are coming to us from Omaha. So I don't know if you heard us a little bit ago. We were talking oh. <laughs> about Cheesecake Factory down there. Um, have you been there? Do you carry? And have you seen that uh, horribly placed no concealed weapons or no concealed carry sign at Cheesecake Factory over by West Roads? Uh, we'll let Codename have a chance to. I know sometimes after I say this, it takes a while before it comes through on YouTube. So. Um, you, uh, you can type in the, in the chat there and see if you've let us know if you've seen that sign or maybe they've moved it. It's been a year or two since I was there. It's kind of a, kind of interesting. Just not this side note. There's no concealed carry allowed in, allowed in uh, cheesecake factory by West Roads. West Roads, West Roads had a couple shootings, huh? Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. Did. Imagine that. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. There's, you your, there's your gun laws at work right there, people. You can, uh, well, you definitely should not concealed carry your, uh, what was it, an SKS that was used in that shooting? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that was a horrible deal. Even in Nebraska, we do have uh, public shootings sometimes. Yeah, the Von Mar store, terrible, terrible thing happened several years ago now in Omaha. Uh, somebody actually took an SKS rifle inside and wanted to make a name for themselves. I don't remember all the details, and we're not going to, we're not going to dig them up here, oh, but. Yeah, terrible absolutely. thing yep and yeah now they've the the way that they they want to make you safe in that mall is you cannot carry in that mall so it worked for those 20 people or 10 people or 15 people that got shot it really worked for them too didn't it yeah it's just yep. i don't understand when a wolf <clears throat> when a wolf kills a sheep why do the sheep insist on cutting their own horns off to keep them safe i don't i don't know why I don't get it, but we will get into that on a different night here before too long, too. Um, so, Codename says he or she, Codename does concealed carry. Um, Good. So, so, that's awesome. And I don't know if you've seen that at Cheesecake Factory or not, but if you get a chance to slip over there, check out that sign. Um, as you're walking up to the front door, it's off to the left, right off the ground, on the window beside the door, and it's not even on the door. And if it's if it's not just right, it's hard to see. You got to know it's there. Um, so, anybody else have any feelings about off body, on body? What do you prefer, Gary? You're always quiet over there. Do you have a, a do you have an opinion on it? I have been known to carry a second gun in my car when I'm driving. Okay. Uh, keep one in my in my pocket where it belongs, and keep a second one. Like either in a glove box or in a console. Look at Gary going off throwdown gun on us. 
No kidding. No kidding. Well, you know, I've thought, you know, if I needed to get to it with my seat belt on, it's kind of hard to get out of the pocket. Well, you know, Kansas is constitutional carry, so it has pretty much turned into the wild, wild west, right, Gary? <laughs> well, <laughs> we say that with some with some sarcasm. Yeah. Pretty much, and I could carry yep. a loaded shotgun if I wanted to. I mean Well, yeah. And and to, to Travis's point, you know, that's one of the biggest objections that anti-gun people have to passing constitutional carry laws is we don't want our states to turn into the the wild wild west but oh, i mean there's now 16 states that have passed it now, it's not effective in all of them but i think we've still got 13 states where you can con, uh constitutional carry right now and two or three more before the end of the year that will that law will go into effect and nobody can tell me what they are uh, unless you okay maybe you can but what i'm saying is um you don't hear headlines. We don't know that there's a, a state that, oh, well, gosh, don't go to Wyoming because you'll get shot there because they all can carry guns without a license. Nobody's heard about this crap happening in, in Wyoming or in Missouri or uh, Kansas where it's been legal for quite some time now, Vermont. Um, so, yeah, to, to Travis's point, um, that Wild Wild West, it's tongue-in-cheek because – you're not hearing about mass shootings. You're not hearing about public violence. You're not hearing about shootouts in the streets in these states because an armed society is a polite society. And where you're hearing about shootouts is inner cities, gang violence, gang upon gang. And those are usually in cities that have pretty strict gun laws, in states that have pretty strict gun laws. Yep. But yet nobody wants to pull their head out of, their, of the sand and... Uh, acknowledge that so out in the chat code name says uh go uh go to nebraska firearms Owners association um it's kind of like the nra only they actually do work in lincoln they do <laughs> for you Heck and yeah. they you to be a member uh you can be a member if you're even if you're from out of state you just don't get to all the stuff you don't get to vote on board members and whatnot but uh yeah, and Patricia Harold. Patricia's actually been in our chats before. Uh, she's a friend, and uh, yeah, she's pretty cool. So definitely go uh, go check out NebraskaFirearms.org. In fact, let's just do this. And real quick, I don't know. You probably just mentioned that, but all the people that work that work for it, they do not have paid positions, correct? All the representatives. They're from all the, volunteer. The president, yep, all the board yep. members, every position at NFOA is a volunteer, unpaid position. Any money that they do raise goes into fighting the good fight. They do not pay their people. Yeah. So, um, it'd be a great job to have, except for I still need to pay bills. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh oh, what, what happened? Yellow cat oh, I think that, uh, oh, you're seeing stuff below. She's following along on the YouTube side, so she's seeing stuff after it happens, and I'm following along here on the Hangout side. Oh. <laughs> I see what she just finally saw the cat woke up. Okay, so uh, all right, anybody else have anything they want to say about on or off body? I you prefer heard? on body carry, I do, but just like sometimes in situations where it is both safer for the concealed part of it to be in the purse, whether I'm at work. You know, I'm at work, but it's not like super safe because we've had crazy people in the parking lot before and there are no cameras. Wow. Then, you know, you're wearing more business clothing, so it's harder to conceal wearing that kind of thing. Dress, mm -hmm. suit pants, etc. Very you true. Never Very letting true. that first out of your field of vision at all. Now, um, you have a unique perspective here as the only female in the panel. Um, earlier in the chat, and I didn't get to follow very well, but I know that Sandhill Sweetheart was asking about um, being able to carry in you know different body types, and even even uh, even us guys, we, we have different body types, and what works for one doesn't work for the other. I can't appendix carry. Uh, there's no way that I can make that comfortable, and if I can make it comfortable, I can't make it concealable. I don't get to choose both for me. Um, so, and, and I don't want you to tell us, you know, your body type or anything. We're definitely not going to make anybody uncomfortable. But when it comes to different body types, 
Um, sometimes one way works better than, you know, for one person than it does for others too. And um, not only with wardrobe, but, you know, a lot of female fashion is different than guy fashion. We can show up in jeans and a t-shirt. We can be frumpy. Nobody really cares. But it seems to me like um, women's fashion is is different. And, you know, loose fitting clothes, they don't, they don't look the same. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it's got to create its own challenges, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. You, do you have any comments towards that effect, Frankie? It does. It becomes very challenging to conceal. I am a petite, very small framed person. Um, a lot of pants are built to be more slim, tight fitting. I don't like that. I like to be able to be comfortable and wear looser clothes. So I tend to buy shirts that are a little bit bigger. Pants I can't really do anything about. Um, but it, it does become a real challenge. Now, I've gone to the point where I'll wear a T-shirt and then a flannel shirt over. But I've had people say, you know, don't worry so much about the printing because people will see you, particularly me. And not say a thing just because of the way I, I i look kind of like everybody when i meet people everybody kind of views me as a little sister kind of thing and they're kind of like a little bit protective mm -hmm. and it's very strange because i'll meet somebody boy or girl man or woman and that's the first instinct they have towards me i don't know why but that's part of what they said to me, like, just don't worry so much about it because with your body type, you can't really conceal too well. I've thought about the whole appendix carry thing, but I just, I'm not comfortable with that. So I do like the six o'clock, a uh, little bit behind my hip kind of position, which would be the standard, I guess. Um, but that's what I do. But that gets, like I said, it gets really tricky, especially when I'm going to work and I have to wear even more form-fitting clothing. Even if I buy just a little bit bigger pants, it's still super form-fitting. You can't conceal that. You just can't. And then you're sitting down at a, at a desk because I work in an office for 10 hours. That's not comfortable even if I was wearing loose clothes. Absolutely. Sure, sure. Um, do you find with what you call a uh, petite body style, do you find that that naturally makes people want to be protective and, and little sister you just because you're, you're not a large imposing physically person? I think that definitely plays into that. So, I mean, if you can make that work to your advantage, uh, you know, when it comes to personal safety there, there's no such thing as cheating. Um, if you have an advantage in any way, shape or form, use it to your advantage. Um, I do know I'm thinking back to a year ago when we were in Tulsa and we had uh, what was, you know, becoming the the gun gals. Uh, they had just kind of started the gun gals chats a little bit. Um, and there was uh, Gunpowder Beauty and that guy's wife and a few others um, that were part of the gun gals. And seeing them go through the, the Wanamaker gun show and see some of the, the concealed carry options for, for females, <clears throat> What was neat was watching some of those videos that they that they produced after that. Um, they they set their pride off to the side and um, let the world see them. You know, not necessarily from head to toe, but more than just from the you know from the shoulders up. And they let their their body type be on display to the world to help show that some of this stuff works for concealment and what works and what doesn't for them as they're trying some of this stuff stuff on at the show and then. I think they, they bought some of it and made more videos after the fact. So, um, and I know Frankie, you've been involved with the gun gals um, in the past too, but if you haven't checked that channel out on YouTube, you need to go look into that, especially if you are a female and you're, you're looking into carrying or you want to know more about it, or maybe um, you've been carrying and you still want to learn more. Um, go check it out because some of these ladies, and we've got a broad uh, range of, you know, personalities and body types and everything. So you might find someone similar to yourself, um, you know, that, uh, that has some ideas that might, might help out, might work for you too. So um, I would definitely check that out. And I don't have them pulled up to, 
throw a link. But if any of the mods want to throw a link in the chat to the gun gals, that'd be cool. So, all right. And then real quick, uh, without a good belt, uh, if you're doing waistband carry, whether it's inside or outside, um, your belt can make or break your holster doing its job. So um, any belt is better, of course, obviously, than no belt, if, especially if you have to thread your belt through your holster to hold it on. But um, there, there definitely are things that, uh, that work better than others. And again, on my own personal journey, um, I started with just cheap, loose belts, leather, even nylon belts. And uh, after I spent the money on an actual designated gun belt, the way that Patriot had said before, he had to leave us. Um, I, I have, a, the first one was Alien Gear brand. The second one was Bigfoot. And as far as I know, same factory. They just stamp a different uh, logo on them now. But the belt that I use, it's, uh, it's two layers of 14-ounce bridal leather. Sandwiched in between them is a, a spring steel core. So, again, videos I keep saying I'm going to make, and I just haven't reviewed the things. But uh, that's what I'm wearing right now. This brown belt is uh, its really cool until you go to a concert and go through a metal detector, and the thing sets off because your belt's made of steel. Um, but uh, um, just having a, a designated gun belt, whether it's – if it's – Steel core, synthetic core, no core, it's just stiff leather. Um, I think that makes a huge difference. Or a uh, stiff nylon belt even, like some of the operator belts are. Um, having that rigidity when you when you belt on your gun definitely makes a huge difference. Does anybody have any experiences to that effect with or without having a, a rigid belt? Yeah, I mean, I, you know... I, I've, I've got some thick leather Dickies belts that I use and they're nice, but man, once you get a nice weight bearing belt of some way or type, it is unreal how much more of the load it relieves that, that you're normally feeling that you're, that you're wearing. And so I, man, I highly recommend one if you're going to go that route, it makes a big difference. Yeah, for, me, I, for me, I use a thick leather belt. That's what I bought. I bought one at Wanamaker last fall. First gun belt I ever owned. And there's just night and day difference. Yeah. You know, even now I pocket carry most of the time and it really doesn't matter much as far as pocket carry goes, but I do occasionally carry IWB, OWB and it just, it's night and day difference as far as the possibilities. Cause it's, it's sturdy enough to hold everything. Plus the holster fits better and everything else. So, mm -hmm. and it's a better belt. Now, mine's just, like I say, the heavy-duty solid leather one. It doesn't have the metal core, which is nice because I can wear it through the metal detector at work, <laughs> and I don't ever set it off. So, I just tell them. And it's a, mine has a stainless steel buckle, too, so I'm, I'm going to set it off no matter what. But uh, I just tell them, like, dude, it's, it's a steel core belt, and nobody's ever had an issue with it. You know, and a lot of security guards kind of know what you're talking about because a lot of security guards also carry if they're in a state where where they can do so. Where I work, you'd have to take that off. <laughs> uh, Dead Horse, you've been chatting over there, and I've been completely ignoring you, and I am so sorry. Um, oh, hey, cool. Let me... Hey, sorry about that, Dead Horse. I didn't see that. Over on the gun channel side, he's telling me that you guys keep hearing every time he makes a comment. Um, quality leather thickness is key. That is very true, Dead Horse. Um, I didn't see you over there, man. I feel bad. I should have thrown you a link in there so you could have you could have come joined us. Um, the thickness is what prevents the twist. I agree with that. Um, when you uh, when you have your belt and it and it does this on you, and it gets kind of kind of floppy. That's definitely what makes the holster not not do its job right sometimes um but yeah inch and a half two and a half three inch belt doesn't matter as long as it's as long as it's thick so yeah that definitely makes a difference yeah uh, sure I, have, I have found this out though i just realized this the other day um sometimes and i'm not using it right now sometimes i use the uh the otter box for my phone and this is the defender case 
what I've found out is the belt clip on one of these. Let me lock this open so you can kind of see. It's got that little J hook to it. My Alien Gear or Big Felt, Big Big Felt, but Big Foot Belt. Don't mind me. I can't talk. Um, is too thick for this to hook over the belt. So it never actually gives me retention on my belt with this little J hook. Um, so keep that in mind. The uh, the belt clips on your holster might have the same might have the same problem. Again, we'll go back to the belt clips on the uh, on the Alien Gear here. But these are designed. Obviously, they're sold by the same place, Alien Gear and Bigfoot belts. So these are designed to fit on a Bigfoot belt, which is nice and thick. Um, but not all belt clips are created the same. So keep that in mind too as you're buying stuff. And again, try stuff out if you're ordering it online make sure that that they have a return policy like alien gear does um if you're trying stuff in a store i know earlier when patriot was here he was saying he bought a holster and didn't test it out in the store um that was mostly i think for modesty's sake because he didn't want to drop his pants in the middle of the store um and try the holster but if if you are looking at holsters in a store and they will not let you uh, and don't do it on your own. Go talk to a salesperson, get some help. But if they don't let you try the thing on and test it out right there in the store, I don't think they want that sale that bad. So anything that, that you're going to buy, you should be able to, to try it out. See if you can actually get it to, to, you know, work with the belt you're wearing or whatever. Um, you know, do all that kind of stuff. Um, you should be able to do that. I've even taken a holster up to the gun counter and said, Hey, you know, is it okay if, if, uh, I take, you know, you grab that gun out of there and, and I try this in the holster and see how it fits. And then I try it on. And yeah, I mean, this was at Cabela's in La Vista, Nebraska. They didn't have a problem with it. They were pretty cool about it. But uh, anybody that actually wants to make that sale is going to let you try stuff on and, and work with stuff. And if, if they won't let you do that, I would find a different store, to be honest. I just wanted to throw that in there. Hey, budget's in the house. What's up, budget? Um, all right. So, uh, does anybody that's still left in our panel, um, anybody using not a gun belt or something that, I mean, it might not be designated as a gun belt. You might get a, a belt from Walmart that's nice and, and thick and rigid. Um, is anybody not using something like that? I used to. I started out with just a, just a regular, you know, leather belt, you know, whether it was, a Harley Davidson belt, or it was, you know, from Walmart or someplace else. But uh, I'm going to drop a link here in the in the chat to to Hank's gun belts is what I what I switched to, and those are amazing. Now they're 100% leather, but they've got a hundred year warranty on them. I've got one in the 14 ounce, which I dropped, and I've got one in the 17 ounce. And that 17 ounce to me is just a little too stiff, but I mean, that thing holds a full size gun and holster just fine. No problems at all with it. All right. Um, yeah. And I, well, mine is actually double layer of 14 ounce. So, so yeah. And if you go to the Bigfoot website, you can get uh, 12 ounce. Um, 14 ounce with or without the steel core and 18 ounce with or without the steel core. And I think the 18 ounce would be just a little too thick. But uh, what I like is the fact that uh, if I if I wanted to pull my belt off, and I'm not going to do that because you guys would hear me huffing and puffing and grunting just to get this holster back off the belt. It's easy if I don't have my pants on, but I'm not porky pigging on my chat. Um, so... Uh, we're not going to do that, but if I could, if I could take this belt off and then buckle it so it's a circle, and then clip this onto it, I mean, you'd see how little it actually bows under the weight of the gun. That's pretty cool. Um, we'll be doing that when I actually get to the review. I've seen guys review these belts that they uh, they they buckle it, set it on the ground, and then stand on the edges, and it doesn't it doesn't cave. It actually is rigid enough to hold their weight on the edges. So that's pretty cool. Uh, budget says he's got the 18 ounce steel core. Is that from, from Bigfoot or from alien gear budget? Um, that seems like it might be just a tad stout. Yeah. 
So we're here. We're here. Oh my gosh, we're getting into talking about drama and females and stuff out there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's shoes and drama and females. And drama and on females. The female fashion Easter episode of Two A Tuesday, huh? The person calling out the females and the drama is female. So, uh, and also, um, I'm married to her, so we're gonna allow it. <laughs> She's my number one moderator, and she says it goes, it goes. Budget says, yeah, that's a Bigfoot belt. It is a great belt, and I, I swear by them. Um, I know, like I said before, the holsters, people think they're gimmicks. They're not, and their customer service is second to none. Um, I've actually uh, called them up before because I I didn't pay attention. It was my fault. I thought that I ordered everything I needed to run two different guns with full setups, and I was missing a couple pieces. And the lady uh, that was on the phone said, oh, my gosh, yeah, it doesn't really say that you need to order this extra stuff. So I'm just going to send it to you. And a week later, <laughs> it was in the mailbox, and I had all the extra pieces. It was only about six, eight bucks worth of stuff before shipping, but they didn't even bat an eye. They just sent it out. Uh, just didn't make me happy. And uh, they don't know it, but that uh, I don't think I've ordered anything from them since then. Um, but I plan to. I plan to, to give Alien Gear more business here down the road. Um, and a lot of it's because they've been such a great company to work with. They've never given me anything free as far as knowing that I was on YouTube. It's always just been as a customer after I ordered something and I got a couple free parts. So that's pretty cool. Um, I've had to return. I, the first belt that I bought was too big and I had to send it back for a size smaller, um, which is a great feeling by the way. So, uh, uh, that was pretty cool, but, uh, yeah, you call them up and, and, uh, they, emailed me a return label and no questions asked and, and uh um they just said hey don't don't fold it over you know you don't want to kink that steel core so when you box it back up just kind of put it in a box big enough that it's you know you don't want it coil any tighter than that so that it doesn't uh ruin that steel core because if there's nothing wrong with it it's going to get repackaged and shipped out to somebody else and there was nothing wrong with it so um, i've had these now for about a year and a half and they're still going strong other than i've got one again that i've uh, lost some weight and it's a little too big so we will be maybe looking into a new belt plus they came out with a dress belt uh three quarter inch width instead of a one inch belt um or no a one inch instead of a, excuse me what i have is inch and a half they make inch and three quarter too um what i have is inch and a half and they make a one inch dress belt version and uh kind of thinking that i'm going to be getting that just for um just for wearing the dress pants and stuff. And I can use that for a work belt. Um, so yeah, heck yeah. Um, anything else anybody wants to throw in there as far as belts go or holsters or anything that maybe, uh, I've overlooked in the chat. Uh, you know, check places. It's going to sound kind of crazy, but check places like, uh, EDC and eBay for holsters. There's a lot of small companies and a lot of moms, mom and pops that have shops in those places. Um, it's surprising you would never think to look on some place like Etsy if you're not into crafty things or handmade things, but there's a lot of really good deals you can make there uh, with people, and there's a lot of really good prices too. So do check it out. That's where I found found my holster guy. Was on 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 Etsy. Uh, I call it or Etsy. eBay or what? Oh, Etsy. I call it Etsy. I get Etsy. What? Because yeah, <laughs> Etsy, Etsy, yeah, eBay, um, eBay, but, uh, whatever. Uh, yeah. So he might call it Etsy. Etsy, I, I Etsy, found, <laughs> I found him because I got the uh, P320 and then I got the the uh, laser module for it. It was right after it came out. Nobody was making holsters for him because SIG and all their wisdom made that laser module bigger than the, uh, the rail. Mm. So they send you a holster with the gun. And it's, you know, it's, it's plastic holster, but once you put that, that laser module on it it doesn't fit in that holster and none of the other and none of the holsters fit because it's about a quarter inch deeper mm. than the rail so i got a hold of this guy and you know sent him some pictures and some measurements and he made one for me and that's my everyday carry holster and since then he did one uh full size 1911 for me he did one for the nightmare uh, and when he got the mold for the p365 i was probably the first or second p365 holster that he ever made oh cool i still have my eye on that gun and and i think i'm gonna get one when the budget opens up and it's time to get me a new gun 
but I'm not the next one to get a gun. Sand Hill Sweetheart gets hers first. And, and that, she, she told me she it. wanted a P365. Um, she, uh, she didn't tell you that, but, uh, she did say <laughs> she wants a Walther PPQ. Um, oh. just cause she's a small handed person doesn't mean that small guns fit her. We found that out, um, when we were shooting with Patricia Harold that Codename Nebraska was, was commenting on from NFOA. Um, and so, uh, Chris brought several guns and, uh, my wife was shooting different ones. Uh, she really liked the PPQ. She did not like the M9. She didn't like the Glock 42 either. She liked the laser that was on it. That was kind of cool. So whatever we get, it's probably going to get a laser put on it um, at some point. But uh, um, but yeah, just because you you have smaller hands doesn't necessarily mean that a smaller gun is going to be easier to shoot. In fact, those of us that have shot a lot know that smaller sometimes is not as easy. Um, it's kind of like riding a bicycle. If you're a grown adult and you're trying to ride a, a child's bicycle, it doesn't always work very well, does it? Just because it's not sized right and everything's kind of tough or you need more experience to do it. Um, yeah, but when I do get a new gun, the cool thing about Alien Gear, this little piece here, and the other half of it and all the pieces that come with it, uh, it's about 35 36 bucks to get a second shell or an extra shell for a different gun. And I won't have to get rid of what I already have. So I like that part. Real quick, over here on the gun channel side, while I was ignoring Dead Horse, um, he's had some good comments over there. So he says, lots of larger status guys can really benefit from a shoulder holster or a thigh holster. Also, people with certain physical disabilities could benefit from these so-called out-of-date carry methods. Um, also says, uh, concealed carry fanny packs, etc. And I'm sure purses would fall into that same uh, group certain people can benefit from so he doesn't knock those carry methods um, I agree with this a hundred percent dead horse says he'd rather see a guy carry a gun in a backpack than not carry a gun at all Because of physical stature or disability and that's kind of how I feel about the off-body carry at least you carry it And it might not be as fast to get into to action But the thing is if if you get surprised you don't we've we've established this you don't outdraw a drawn gun and maybe you're fast but that doesn't mean that it's going to end well um so maybe that uh, that quick draw isn't always the thing right but uh you still have the element of surprise because it's concealed so we have that going for us um and, if, and he also says can't go wrong with the ppq i know i kind of want one for myself too i'm not opposed to buy it to buy in two of them um but uh that's okay i don't need one yet but all right, so good stuff coming from Dead Horse over on the, the Gun Channel's chat. And uh, good stuff coming from everybody out in the YouTube chat. Um, let's uh, let's recap, and I know that I won't say hi to everybody, but uh, over in YouTube, we had Budget Guns and Gear. Oh, look at you. <laughs> I've got the best wife in the world. She's kept notes so I can name everybody that's shown up. So... Um, we had, in no particular order, except for these were the order she saw them in, uh, we had Detemp, Tacos and French Fries, Jason Stewart, Ghost Tactical, Mike, uh, Frankie's Guns and Glitter, Joe Ziola, Gun Loving Grandpa, Stanley Seven Wonders, The Mech, uh, Boob Sweat Leads to Pearl Necklaces, Stephen Brown, Ocasio Keyboard, Too Hottie, Midnight Range TM, Grim 90, the poor conservative agorizer Joe Smith was here. Always a fun guy. Uh, Rob C in the house. Mrs. Rob C in the panel. Um, Ohio 45 ACP, who we met up with in Tulsa last year. Local 223, Freedom for All. William Keller. Travis T was in the house. Zippy, I didn't see Zippy. Double uh, A out there. What's up, Double A? Say hi, but hi. Um, Edward said hi. Kinky Sphincter. Guy that comments. Gizzard Gary. Snob's wife was there. I didn't see Snob, but I see Snob's wife. That's cool. Um, Ozzy's in the house. Patriot was out there. Codename Nebraska. Welcome again. I don't think we've seen you before. Uh, Guitar Man Pete was reloading while he was listening, and Budget showed up too. So uh, thanks, everybody, for being here. We're going to let everybody go through and uh, and just sign off and, and throw anything out there about their channel that's still here. Thanks to Patriot in the Dark. Thanks to Kingpin for being in our panel earlier. Uh, Travis, anything you want to say? 
Yeah, just my my cat's exhausted, man. This is a long <laughs> show, and she was she's just she's like, man, I've had enough. I'm going to bed. I said, all right, cool. No, but guys, again, do check out Caliber Corner. Uh, I know you, I keep saying this because I know I'm going to have people that won't know that the show has moved. It's going to be Thursday nights. Uh, in two days, we're going to have an episode. Five to seven Central Time, six to eight Eastern Time will be done before Sarge's show kicks off. Um, otherwise, that's it. Make sure you guys support GunChannels.com. Everybody here on the panel, make sure you check out their channels. They got great content. And uh, make sure you guys support uh, GunTube.org. You can do that through purchasing stuff. Uh, if you buy things like Brownells or PSA, buy it through through the GunTube's websites and help out um, Night Strike to keep the channel or to keep the network going and stuff. And that's pretty much it, man. It's good stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Uh, Obnoxious, any closing thoughts, things you want to plug on the channel? Uh, yeah, everybody can go to my Patreon to support my fight against e-begging. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, how's that work uh, again? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, Patreon backslash obnoxious one to support the fight against e-begging. So. Support the fight against e-begging. Gotcha, because we wouldn't allow that. Also, uh, Obnoxious has some cool stuff up on Spreadshirt. <clears throat> you can get the hashtag Porky Piggin shirt. <laughs> yes, you can get your hashtag Porky Piggin shirts. So, um, yeah. Shell Nut Pee and Fridge shirts are also there on, <laughs> on my Spreadshirt. And then uh, the orange Every Second Matters, is that coming from you or is that somewhere else? That's coming from G. Okay. And actually, this one with the white lettering, I bought this and I bought the uh, gun channels with the G on it in, in the white and then I and after I bought those, I thought to mention to G, hey, why don't you put those up with uh, black lettering so they show up a little better on light shirts? And then he did. And so I now have a black one of the Every Second Matters and the Gun Channels G as well. So is, now is that on Spreadshirt or GearWebsites.com or where is that? That is on that's on uh, Spreadshirt on Gear Websites store. So Gear website store on Spreadshirt. You can also get some of this cool stuff from gearwebsites.com. You can get all kinds of all kinds of stuff. He put up a bunch of stuff. He and put he up cool stuff on eBay too under Gear yeah, Website. Yep. Yep. Put up Poco Ghibli shirts and he put yeah. up a, a bunch of stuff. Cool. Daily gun show shirts, all kinds of stuff over there. But that's where I got these. Um Sarge and I will be on the road Thursday. So Are we you will going to Tulsa? Yeah. Sarge and I I'm leaving I'm leaving here Thursday late morning um picking up sarge on the way and we're driving through awesome to, very to cool oh, man we should just, you know what? So we're gonna go right. I, I, no she's shaking her head we're not gonna go <laughs> I, 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 uh sweetheart i it's okay if he goes it really is next year, we won't. Next year. No, she, she have you seen that uh, karaoke video she's not letting me go without her going this time <laughs> john that's gonna be kind of aw awkward when when your wife wants to share the room with you and me how's that gonna work out next year we never talked about the details of that well we had a we had to get a hide a bed and sleep on the we hallway had two beds. Bed. i know we had two, i know and we didn't use yeah. one so she yeah i mean i can sleep in the corner on like a blanket or something it's fine <laughs> yeah. a little, a little. We, had a, we had a whole bed that never got used so why you don't hear i'm gonna we're, we're gonna break up now gary gizzard you and i can split a room okay instead <laughs> end this, end this now before it might be a little might be a little better than that one yeah <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well, I don't know. He wakes up with a got the crack of dawn because he's a rooster. So I don't know if I want that either. But true. Uh, true. Gary kicks the yeah, starts crowing. They start crowing and bunk with the obnoxious one now. I suppose. Jeez, tell you what. Be in doing a review on a soap in the bathroom or something. Like you know that. what? I did the breakfast. I did a review on the breakfast that morning. Yeah. That guy's wife was looking at me like I was insane. I'm sitting here pl poking yeah. at the, the the eggs and the bacon and talking about the texture of the yogurt, you know. And it was also a <laughs> McDonald's on the way home too when we were south of Wichita. So, what was that? The what now? The McDonald's cheeseburger. You reviewed that? Oh before. yeah, yeah. I don't know if I ever uploaded that one. That was the yeah. the, the the hand. It was the handmade quarter pounder with cheese. Yeah, because I guess they're made by something else if they're not handmade. I don't yeah, know. They, I think they had just changed their burger recipe to where they yes. weren't. Uh, apparently, they weren't just scraping them up off the floor anymore. They were actually hand patty. Or, might, or they might actually put human hands in the patty. Is what I don't want to know. Me so, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't want to know um, what's in the in the quarter pounder. It's a possibility, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> All right, Gary. Sarge and I will be on the road Thursday oh, night. Sorry. So actually, uh, Gunstab will be hosting. 
at uh, our regular time at the nine o'clock, eight central. And Sarge and I are going to be joining on from our phones on the road. So oh, cool. if anybody's looking for Sarge or I on Thursday night, you want to check out the Gun Snobs channel. It'll be on the Gun Snobs channel, but it'll still be Sarge and Obnoxious. All right, you heard it here. And it sounds like Stan from SS Pawn in Lexington, Nebraska, is going to Wanamaker this year. Awesome. So find that guy because uh, and tell him hi because I've not gotten to meet him yet. I told and him I've to got, got about him too, So, yeah. <laughs> Tell him to look for the guy in the orange shirt. Travis. There we go. Well, there's going to be a lot of people wearing orange, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tell him to look for the good looking guy in the orange shirt. There you go. Tonight, but if you catch this on the replay stand, make sure that you find those gun channels, people, um, and uh, and check them out. And, and just watch the videos. I'm sure that you'll be able to find them because uh, they have a tendency to all go live. So, uh, cool. So yeah. Uh, real quick in the chat, Code Name Nebraska is asking about flooding and need aid. Uh, code name. Go to uh, go to the Sand Hill Shooter channel. Uh, you're probably already obviously here. Um, there's a video that we posted last week about uh, relief effort. It's Nebraska Strong is the name of the video, and uh, that is um, a PayPal that we started up that we're raising some money. So if anybody wants to throw, <clears throat> excuse me, throw some aid for flooding and blizzard victims, um, I just found out today, Lynch, Nebraska. It's right up on the state line. Uh, close to South Dakota, and it is just below where Spencer Dam went out. Uh, Lynch has still no running water in town. They need about four hundred or five hundred thousand dollars. They got to dig new wells and everything, and uh, they don't know how they're going to come up with that money because they're not hearing anything from FEMA. Uh, their county wasn't even listed in the emergency counties, um, and that's where the dam blew out. So I don't know why. Um, that's I don't know if that's true. I did hear that today though. And about 55 families have been displaced from their homes and are still uh, not at home um, in Lynch, Nebraska. So uh, that is probably where a lot of this money is going to go. We, we set a goal at $2,500. we are at $150. So if anybody wants to be generous or find that video and share it with people who want to be generous. And uh, we'll keep that going. It was supposed to end in March, but we'll keep that going for a while. So, um so yeah, that's that's what's up with the flooding. We don't need aid here, code name, but a lot of people do, and uh, that's the best part about Nebraskans is we always help out our neighbors. So all right, Gizzard, anything you want to throw out there? Final thoughts? Uh, check out my website, gizzardgary.com. Uh, my normal shows that I do on the weekends, my Friday night foul territory, and the Sunday morning uh, early bird chat are gonna kind of be iffy. Well, the early bird chat is definitely if we do anything at all it'll be a live stream from uh, Wanamaker uh, Friday night again there will probably be stuff going on so I'm not real sure I don't want to promise anything but if I do have time to uh, do a chat I will post it on gun channels and we'll try to throw something together as fast as we can but I don't know what the schedule is going to be so it's going to be kind of up in the air this weekend because I'm going to be at Tulsa with everybody else. Actually, I'm leaving Thursday afternoon, so I'll be there probably around dinner time Thursday. I'm going to get everything ready for everybody, I guess. I'll be one of the first ones in. So, awesome. Looking forward to it. Cool, cool. All right. And last but not least, we've got Frankie's Guns and Glitter. Hey, thanks for the invite. Yeah. Uh, go check out my channel, Frankie's Guns and Glitter. I also have an Instagram account. And the fun new thing that's going on is I am now the co-host of a new channel called Intentionally Left Blank with Angelina. So go check out our videos. We are going to be having a live chat every other Monday for now. Uh, and we also have an Instagram and Facebook account. And it's called what again? Intentionally left blank. Intentionally left blank. Yes. This page intentionally left blank. I get it. That's cool. All right. You heard it here. Intentionally left blank. Go check that out. Um, we need to. Uh, have, I, have I made you a mod? If you want to post that, a link to that over in, uh, over in YouTube, go ahead. Or if you do it in the side chat, we'll get you there. 
watch that week. Good, but I, I posted it on the side chat too. I think Rob just did. Did oh, that, is that what you posted, Rob? Awesome. All right, so Rob C has posted that up over there. Go check that page out, and uh, I'll be going and checking that out too. Um, you know what? We've got just a few minutes. Let's just do this. I can do this. I can. I haven't been here. This is the first time we've ever been to. Here we go. To intentionally left blank. Is this it, Frankie? Oh, wait, hold on. I got to click that first, and then you can see what I see. Yes, that's it. That is, that is cool lettering. That looks totally 80s right there. I like it. Oh, it's kind of like Stranger Things. Yeah, you should play that. Oh, we're subscribing to that, and I want notifications. Click that bell. Very cool. All right. Um, I'll get copyright busted if I play this on here, so I'm not going to do that, but um, there we go. Okay. Right, and we're going to be uh, doing some giveaways. Giveaway? We love free stuff. Oh, it's going to be good. We love free stuff. Not enough that I want to vote for Bernie, but I do love free stuff, so... All right. Well, with that, we will sign off here um, again to uh, to resist e-begging because we would never e-beg. Anybody who wants to support Sand Hill Shooter can go to Patreon and support us there, or you can catch us on GunStreamer because we do have our contributors set up over there too. Um, if you want to support Nebraskans in need, you can go over to uh, either the video here on YouTube or you can check us out on Facebook. We've got the video posted up there too. Um, in fact, if you haven't gone to Facebook, you need to check us out over there, facebook.com slash Sandhill Shooter, and uh, give us a look over there. Um, Double A threw a super chat in here too, just because. So thanks, Double A, for that. You are awesome. And uh, yeah, the more uh, support we get, if we get some some more Patreon uh, patrons or contribute as patrons, then uh, eventually we can get uh, you know better microphone and that kind of stuff going on. So, um, so yeah, we will take that money and, and reinvest it back into better equipment here. Um, I right now try to save up for a new computer fund so that maybe we can do better editing and stuff. I don't edit a lot of videos that I shoot just because it takes most of an afternoon to edit a, a just a five, six minute video, just cause the computer kind of is a little bit slower, um, a little antiquated. So we need to get something a little better. That's what's happening. I'm not begging for money. You don't have to support us a bit. We'll get there. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. This has been 2A Tuesday, uh, April 2nd, 2019. Every second matters. Make sure that uh, if you don't know what this is all about, you go to everysecondmatters.com. Don't spell out second. Every 2ndmatters.com. And check that out. See what this movement is. Uh, there's nobody that owns it. Nobody is making money specifically off of this anybody can get in on it if you want shirts patches hats that kind of stuff there's places you can get them uh so uh check that out but uh if you can't open carry you can wear this patch or wear the shirt maybe somebody will ask you what that means and uh you can still have that uh, pro gun conversation with them so it's just a great way to raise awareness without uh having to, to wait for any of the big organizations to do it we are our own organization right if you haven't been to gunchannels.com then you're missing out you need to go subscribe to that it's free and uh, anything gun related there's somebody there that, that thinks like you do likes what you like and wants to talk about what you want to talk about so go check that out thanks everybody for being here uh this has been i think what was it number 22 in a series we've been doing this a while now and no intention of stopping uh catch us up next week and I think next week uh, I put a poll up actually on YouTube and uh, neither one of those two topics to be covered tonight. So we're going to do one of those. Uh, the one with the most votes is going to get picked for uh, next week. So I think it looks like it's going to be some government stuff talking about socialism and democracy. And we'll wait till next week. But uh, I'll tell you why I vehemently oppose both socialism and democracy. I'll leave you guys hanging on that. God bless. Bye, Felicia. And uh, get off my lawn. Adios, Felicia. Give him the bird. <laughs>